pitch up and in. That misses for ball one. Taylor at least turned his shoulders, brought his hands down, but kept the barrel back enough that the catcher, Carson Kelly, did not ask for an appeal. Taylor has singled in four trips. Miller, a big deep breath. Pitch. Strike on the inside corner. A splitter. Kind of a backup splitter, which is not a great type of splitter. Well, that's one and one on Taylor. Urshela is hugged over towards the line at third. McKinstry is pulled over a bit toward the line at short. And Colt Keith up the middle at second. The 1-1. One -one. Fouled at home plate. Another big rip by Tyrone Taylor. And it's a ball and two strikes. Remember, this is a very aggressive hitter, and Miller knows that. So ahead in the count, one and two. In this situation, there is no need to throw him a strike. Wanting to see if Tyrone Taylor will get himself out here. First thing he's doing is walking off that foul ball that injured him. Angel Hernandez has stepped in front of home plate to give Taylor some time. Now those two are having a conversation, and there goes Angel behind the catcher, Kelly. And Taylor hops back in. Winning run at second. That's Zach Short. Jeff McNeil's at first. Top, bottom of the 10th. Tie game, 3-3. Three, three. Two outs, two strikes. Miller set. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him with a fastball up and in. And the Mets leave the winning run at second base. Tigers also left the leading run on. It's a scoreless extra inning. We go to the 11th. Mets and Tigers tied at three on the WCBS Mets Radio Network, driven by your Tri Honda dealers. Let's go, Mets! Discover the legacy of luxury at Bill Vince's Bridgewater Acura. With over 35 years of excellence, explore their latest lineup, including the new 2024 Acura Integra, TLX, RDX, MDX, and get ready for the electrifying arrival of the ZDX. Plus, explore a diverse selection of high-quality used cars, meticulously inspected and ready to hit the road. Visit BridgewaterAcura.com to discover unparalleled sophistication and precision performance. Find them at 1231 U.S. 22 in Bridgewater, New Jersey. today at carsforkids.org. That's cars with a K. Your car can be picked up as soon as the next day. Receive a tax deduction and vacation voucher. 1877 cars for kids Donate your car today. Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate. New Jersey's got a lot of summer wow. We got your under the sun wows. Your this is too much fun wows. Your that wine was sublime, wows. And your one more time, wows. So come see what your wow's gonna be. New Jersey, it's one summer wow after another after another. Find your wow at visitnj.org. New Jersey, little state, lot of wow. Now for the first time this year, the Mets go to the 11th inning. Taking on the Detroit Tigers. It is a 3-3 game. Neither team scored in the 10. Sometimes in these extra innings, you see we go further and further because both teams match each other. But neither team scored a run in the 10th. So in the 11th, Tigers back at the plate. The new catcher is Omar Narvaez. The free runner at second is Andy Ibanez. And Michael Tonkin, who is the pitcher of record on Monday in extras, he gets the 11th. Either manager or Howie really wanted to be here because they've got to use everybody up in this game, and we have a whole other game to play after this. You better believe it. This early in the season, especially when you're judicious about number of pitches guys are allowed to throw. So Apanya is at second. Here's Riley Green, and he fouls the first pitch back, nothing and one. The only reliever left in the Mets' bullpen right now is Reed Garrett. So certainly just looking at it from a Mets perspective, whatever A.J. Hinch does, in game two, the Mets are going to have to push Buto as far as they can. He'll be the starting pitcher. The 0-1 fouled back to the screen. No balls and two strikes. After Green, Verling, and Keith scheduled a hit for Detroit. Tigers have five hits. The Mets have six. Green's home run in the eighth inning is the most recent hit there's been in this game. 0-2 pitch, down and in, blocked by Narvaez. Now the count, one ball and two strikes. So you got to figure that there are going to be 
at least one or two Mets pitchers who wind up working in both games of the doubleheader, not the way it would be drawn up. One and two to Green, the pitch. Swing and a liner to right field. That's going to be a base hit. Marte waiting on it. Joey Cora is going to hold Abanez at third as Marte plays into the cutoff man, Alonzo, near the mound. And the Tigers now have runners at first and third. Nobody out. A sharply struck single there by Riley Green. Well, sharply is the key word there because Marte has a great arm. And the quicker that ball gets out to Starling Marte, the quicker Joey Cora, who's Starling Marte's buddy, over the last couple of years, the quicker his hands shoot up to stop Abanez at third. They do not want to run on Marte's arm this early in the inning. So here is Matt Verling. The middle infielders are back at double play depth. The corners are even with the bags. The first pitch, bouncing ball to third. Beatty down to his knee. It caroms off his chest, recovers, throw home. Abanez slides. He's out. He's out. A head first slide by Abanez at the plate. Narvaez put the tag on. Stopping at second is Green. Verily on at first via the fielder's choice. Well, it was chiller theater there for a minute as that ball ricocheted hard off the chest of Brett Beatty, but he scrambled after it and was able to make the play at the plate to cut down a Bañez for the first out. These types of plays, you see Beatty maybe throw the ball right into the back of the base runner, and then Narvaez has no chance. But Beatty throws a basically a 100-mile-an-hour fastball to Narvaez and just eludes Bañez initially and allows Narvaez to get in front of the plate. And make the play on Abanez. Wow. Well, plus you take the runner off of third now, so they can't get the run home on and out. Mets back at double play depth. First pitch to Keith. Taken on the outside corner. Strike one called. So now you've got Green, the runner, at second. Veerling at first. Colt Keith is 0 for 4. The outfield straight away. Tonkin sets at the letters. The pitch. Swing and a miss at a sinker. And it's nothing in two. Now you're looking at perhaps, for whatever sake, there is momentum within a half inning, never mind a game. Little swing emotionally over to the Mets side. But can Tonkin do the rest? It's 0-2 to Keith. Here's the pitch. Check swing. Did he go? They look to third. No, according to Lance Barksdale. And it's one ball and two strikes. Keith has power. I mean, he's a big kid, 6'3", 211, just getting his feet wet in the major leagues. One for 16. The one-two pitch. Breaking ball outside. Two balls and two strikes. What a struggle this has turned into. Mets led three to nothing. Tigers with single runs in the sixth, seventh, and eighth. Tied it. Identical totals at three, six, and oh. Two-two pitch. Foul back to the screen. A big cut at a sinker. So Tonkin working hard here. Of course, he did give up the five runs in the 10th inning on Monday night, although technically they were all unearned, there was the error by Joey Wendell, but he gave up a three-run homer to Carson Kelly, and it's Kelly who's on deck right now. Two and two to Keith, the pitch. Swing on a high fly ball, left center field, pretty deep into the gap, Taylor with Nimmo, it's in for a hit, bounds off the base of the wall, the runner's held immediately, now Green in motion, coming to the plate, the throw coming in way too late, Green slides in safely, going to third and stopping there, Veerling, and on at second with a double and a run batted in is Colt Keith, and the Tigers have taken a 4-3 to three lead. Both runners had to hesitate a bit, not sure if that ball was going to be caught by either Nimmo or Taylor. And it wound up splitting them and hitting the base of the wall for an RBI double. Our first view, really, of Colt Keith's power. Fastball out over the plate. He goes the other way on this and beats Nimmo and Taylor over their heads. And the ball just hit the base of the wall in left center. Infield in. First pitch to Kelly in for a called strike. Nothing and one. So the Tigers have taken the lead. But now... Things get particularly urgent with two more in scoring position. The infield up. The 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss at a sweeper. And it's 0-2. Mets are going to have Bader, Nimmo, and Lindor do up when we go to the bottom of the 11th inning. Time called at home plate by Kelly. So Obviously, the Mets will get the free runner, but it is incumbent upon Tonkin to keep it right here had a one-run Tiger lead. The 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball just dribbled foul to the backstop. Just got a piece of that sweeper. Mets outfielders, particularly Taylor in center, 
several steps the other way. Really, all three of them decidedly over towards the opposite field. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Got him with a fastball. So two men away. That's a big out for a couple of reasons. Not only the obvious that it becomes the second of the inning, but also now the Mets can move the infield back. For a strikeout for Tonkin, Gio Urshela will see what he can do about widening this 4-3 to three Detroit lead. Bright sunshine now. First pitch, breaking ball, swung on and missed. Nothing and one, the sweeper. Matt Veerling is the runner at third. Colt Keith, the runner at second. Outfield remains to the opposite side for Urshela. The pitch. Breaking ball, dribbled foul over by the Mets on deck circle. Well, Tonkin stays ahead, no balls and two strikes. Tigers' bullpen is quiet right now, the indication being that Shelby Miller is going back out there. Tonkin, the eighth pitcher the Mets have used. The 0-2, breaking ball hit in the air, shallow center, tough play. McNeil out, can't reach it. Base hit, two runs will score. Beerling is in. Keith right behind him scores. On at first with a two-run single. His third hit of the game, Gio Urshela. And the Tigers have opened up a 6-3 lead here in the 11th inning. Tyrone Taylor, great speed in center. You had McNeil going out for this as well. And the fact that this thing falls in, it was right off the end of the bat. So that little hesitation, Taylor had to wait and see the speed and Got a late break, couldn't get to it. Well, here's Zach McKinstry now, left-hand batter. Breaks his bat, shoots one in the air to shallow left. That's in for a base hit. Picked up by Nimmo. Down to second is Urshela. And Michael Tonkin not getting a whole lot of help here, not from his defense, just from the baseball lords because Urshela hit a very shallow Texas leaguer to shallow center. And then Tonkin comes back, breaks McKinstry's bat. And McKinstry gets a base hit, and the Tigers have runners at first and second, two out. Mark Canna, the x mac coming up, and Jeremy Hefner, the Mets pitching coach, out at the mound. Now you go back to Monday, and Tonkin had a lot of the same type of contact. Remember that little comebacker off of his glove that he couldn't handle that rolled away, and extra base runners and extra runs. This is such as life sometimes for a reliever, but... You figured if you're a guy like Tonkin, it wouldn't be the exact next outing you have. You want to put that one behind you, but it has creeped back up and shown its face to Michael Tonkin yet again. Well, the Tigers will send their eighth man to bat here in the 11th inning, Mark Kenna. Kenna, pinch hit for Parker Meadows in a lefty-righty move in the seventh. Walk also fouled out to first. First pitch, breaking ball, the sweeper. A little bit low, ball one. Tigers now with nine hits, the Mets six. Rochelle is at second, McKinstry at first with two out. The pitch, way outside with a slider. And the count 2-0, and oh, Spencer Torkelson, power hitter, waiting on deck. On out, Tonkin has thrown 20 pitches here. Again, all of this with an eye towards game two here. That's going to need help from the bullpen, the 2-0. Tries to hold a swing. Did he go? Yes, he did on appeal to first. John Bacon says he went around in the count two and one on Canna. And remember, Johan Ramirez is still technically suspended for this game, so he's potentially a possibility for game two. Two one catch. Fastball swung on and missed. It's two and two. Right, his suspension was lopped from three games down to two. And this is the second of those. Rochelle at second, McKinstry at first. Pitch to Canna, breaking ball inside, he hit him. On a 2-2 pitch, he throws a sweeper and hits Mark Canna. That's uh, typical with Canna hitting or being hit as much as anybody in baseball over the last few years. We know all about that, having seen firsthand, and that loads the bases now. So once again, the Tigers now move. Two runners into scoring position as Rochella goes to third, McKinstry to second. And here's Torkelson, one for five. The pitch, weak swing and a miss and a sinker. And the count, nothing and one. Six to three, Detroit. Bases loaded, two out in the 11th. The 0-1, inside, almost nicked him. 
That was a fastball that Torkelson just turned away from. And so the count even, a ball and a strike. Shella at third, McKinstry at second, Canna at first. One and one, now the pitch. In tight, also came close to hitting him. He thinks he's been hitting the hand. Angel saying it hit his bat. Torkelson's <laughs> taking his gear off. Well, remember we said that Angel Hernandez would find his way into the middle of something sooner or later. Torkelson thinks he's been hit. Angel Hernandez signaled foul ball. And now everybody looking into the dugout, and I think we're going to have a review here. Yep. It, de it definitely hit something. It sounded like it hit a pad, which is what Torkelson is saying. It hit me on the arm or the hand pad. And Angel's saying it hit the bat. And from a look at it, if it hit anything, it looked like it almost hit the knob of the bat. I, I can't even make that out to be sure. I'd like to see that again because sometimes, you know, you see the slightest change of direction of the ball. And that gives you a window into exactly what happened. Yeah, now we're getting that enhanced look I wondered about. Did it hit him in the hand or the knob of the bat? I don't know if the ball changed direction or not. If anything, it hit the knob of the bat. I'm thinking it might have gone straight into the glove. Yeah, or it, it grazed at the very least. That the look that we're getting is from center. The knob of the bat, the hand comes down. And really the only surface area that's available to be hit by the ball in the path is the bottom of the bat. So it's almost impossible for it to have gone around the bat and onto a piece of flesh there before going into the catcher's mitt. And A.J. Hinch is out for, you know, just a nice afternoon conversation with Angel Hernandez. Is there such a thing? <laughs> well, it's obviously tongue-in-cheek. He is pleading his case, whatever it may be, about the challenge. I don't know. We haven't heard a ruling come down. So I don't know what A.J. Hinch is getting upset about, but I'm sure, I'm sure he's in the right. Angel did call it a foul ball. Well, was it a foul ball or, uh, to me, from what I've seen, I'm not sure if there was a ricochet or not. That ball might have somehow gone straight into Narvaez's mitt, which would mean swinging strike if that was the call. Now, again, I know what you're saying about how unlikely it is that there was any contact between the knob and the, and the, and the ball itself, but I, I can't see where it actually hit the bat or his hand, for that matter. I think it's a swinging strike. So I, was that not even a challenge? Then? Well, you can't argue balls and strikes, right? So it depends on what they figured out here. I think that's a swinging strike, and that's how it's going to stand. One and two, the count to Torkelson. One and two. Here's the pitch. Swing on a bounce at a third, waiting on it, Beatty. He's got it, throws across in time. Side retired. So the Tigers leave them loaded, but they did send nine men to the plate. They scored three runs. There were four hits, no errors, three men left. Middle of the 11th inning at City Field. It's the Tigers six and the Mets three on the WCBS Mets Radio Network, driven by your Tri Honda dealers. Let's go, Mets! Discover the legacy of luxury at Bill Vince's Bridgewater Acura. With over 35 years of excellence, explore their latest lineup, including the new 2024 Acura Integra, TLX, RDX, MDX, and get ready for the electrifying arrival of the ZDX. Plus, explore a diverse selection of high-quality used cars, meticulously inspected and ready to hit the road. Visit BridgewaterAcura.com to discover unparalleled sophistication and precision performance. Find them at 1231 U.S. 22 in Bridgewater, New Jersey. today at carsforkids.org. That's cars with a K. Your car can be picked up as soon as the next day. Receive a tax deduction and vacation voucher. one 877 cars for kids Donate your car today. Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate. New Jersey's got a lot of summer wow. We got your under the sun wows. Your this is too much fun wows. Your that wine was sublime wows. And your one more time wows. So come see what your wow's going to be. New Jersey, it's one summer wow after another after another. Find your wow at visit NJ.org. New Jersey, little state, lot of wow. 
We go to the bottom of the 11th inning at City Field. The Tigers with three in the top half have a 6-3 to three lead. Tyrone Taylor is the free runner for the Mets at second. And Harrison Bader will bat for the second time in the DH spot after replacing D.J. Stewart and grounding to short his first time up. And the first pitch by Shelby Miller. Bader shows one, pulls back, and takes high ball one. Now there certainly will be some discussion, if not controversy, about the decision to have Brett Beatty try to bunt, leading off the bottom of the 10th with that winning run at second and nobody out. Beatty, not a guy who's often been asked to bunt. Bunted foul twice, then struck out. Here's the 1-0. Bader pops it up. Outside first. Foul ground might be playable. Torkelson near the railing. Runs out of room. It goes into the well next to the Mets dugout on the right of the dugout. And the count one ball and one strike. So, behind Bader, Brandon Nimmo and Francisco Lindor, each of whom are hitless today and continue to struggle. One and one to Bader. Miller deals. Fastball over. Strike two called. Infield is set back. The outfield is straight away. Sun shining brightly, and a lot of those clouds have kind of moved away out to the right field side, and a lot of blue sky over the left field portion. One two pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. Just beat him with a fastball at 94. Three strikeouts for Shelby Miller, one man away, and now Brandon Nimmo. Well, Nimmo, now 1 for 19 on the year and 0 for his last 14. He has gone 0 for 3 with two walks. And he walked leading off the bottom of the ninth inning when the game was tied. Couldn't get him home. He actually stole second. First pitch, taken high ball one. In the ninth inning. Against Jason Foley, Nimmo not only drew the walk, but on an 0-2 pitch, stole second. Lindor took it for a ball. Lindor wound up striking out. Alonzo walked, but Alvarez it into a double play. The 1-0 taken for a called strike. It's 1-1. One one. Mets have gone 2 for 15 with runners in scoring position today. They have left 12. Excruciating, isn't it? Something. They're getting the base runners. Just that big hit saluted them. Here's the 1-1 pitch. A little bit low, 2-1. and one. Of course, if Nimmo finds his way on, then Lindor would be the tying man at the plate. But again, you're talking about two cold hitters here, albeit very, very early, but still have not been able to ignite anything. 2-1-1 to Brandon. Miller deals. On the inside corner with his fastball, 2-2. Two and two. Of course, there's no safety net at the moment available behind Shelby Miller. He's already thrown 23 pitches. You know, we won't be seeing him in the second game. Two and two to Nimmo. Here's the pitch. Swing at a bouncing ball to second. Right at Colt Keith. Runner crossing over. Keith up with it. Throws to first in time. Two men away. Taylor goes to third. But now the Mets are down to their last out and still need Lindor to reach to bring Alonzo to the plate as the tying run. So that's the scenario here. Lindor tries to get on. Alonzo tries to even it up. But the Mets' margin for error has dissipated. They're down to their last out, trailing by three. First pitch. Fast ball upstairs. Ball one. Lindor has got to fight and claw his way on any which way here. The third baseman, or shell is off the line. Taylor measures his lead down the line in foul ground at third. The 1-0 pitch. High ball two. We have to think Lindor would take a pitch here at 2-0. Remember earlier in this game, he was ahead in the count 2-0. And then went after a bad ball. And 2-0 became 2-1. Wound up being retired. The 2-0 pitch. He takes this one. It's in for a called strike. It's 2-1. Alonzo waiting on deck. One fan identifies Angel Hernandez behind the plate. He's actually behaved quite well. Not the fan, Angel. 2-1 pitch, down and in, ball three. And Miller stumbled a little bit there in his follow-through right around the landing spot. I don't know if he's going to feel the need to manicure that at all. He just kind of peeks at it as he goes back to the right of the rubber. 
and rubs up the baseball. So three and one to Lindor. The outfield deep and around towards right. Francisco batting left-handed. Shelby Miller deals 3-1. Way upstairs, ball four. So it's fair to ask now, 30 pitches into this outing, whether or not Miller's tank is starting to go dry. And this is the scenario that the Mets hoped for, that Lindor would find his way aboard and give Pete Alonso a shot here to tie this game with one swing. Uh, unlike uh, Carlos Mendoza, A.J. Hinch has not used everybody. He still has Tyler Holt, Will Vest, Alex Fajardo. He still has names in that bullpen he'd like to save for game two. But even at 6-3, which you figured would be in hand, it has not been in hand for either side today. Nothing's been comfortable. Omar Narvaez is on deck. So, Miller's first pitch. Taken for a called strike as Lindor walks down to second. Defensive indifference moves him into scoring position. But again, his run doesn't mean anything. It's about Alonzo's at the plate. Oh, and one to Pete. Outfield very deep. Round towards right. The pitch in tight almost nicked him. And the count, one ball and one strike. Again, Narvaez on deck, certainly not the power threat that Alonzo is, but Pete's the tying run. One and one the count. Infield set back. Here's the pitch. Low and away, ball two. And still nobody throwing behind Miller. 32 pitches spent. That's getting Reed Garrett ready now in case they can send this to a 12th inning. He's the only guy left in their bullpen. Two and one. Miller sets now the pitch. Fastball, he takes it, a call strike. And it's two and two. Inner half, but clearly a strike. And now the Mets down to their last strike. So Pete calls timeout. Readjust his paraphernalia a little bit. Batting gloves, picks up the Velcro, taps the bat once across home plate. He's ready to go. Two and two, the count. Miller from the first base side of the rubber. Taking as much time as he can. Pitch clock down to three. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled into the mid of the catcher. Kelly strike three, and the ball game is over. For the second straight time in this series, the Tigers have beaten the Mets in extra innings. Carlos Mendoza is now 0-5, as are the Mets. Mendoza's lost his first five games as a big league manager. In the 11th inning for New York, no runs, no hits, a walk to left. The final score in 11 innings, the Detroit Tigers 6 and the New York Mets 3. Back to talk about it in a moment on the WCBS Mets Radio Network, driven by your Tri Honda dealers. Let's go, Mets! Wendy's Breakfast 2 for $3 Biggie Bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best. Sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee. Or two savory sausage biscuits. Uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's 2 for $3 Biggie Bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price and participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. Spectrum One is a big deal. You get Spectrum Internet with the most reliable internet speeds, free advanced Wi-Fi for enhanced security and privacy, and a free Spectrum Mobile Unlimited line with nationwide 5G included, all while saving big. For the big speed, big reliability, and big savings you want, get Spectrum One. Just $49.99 a month for 12 months. Visit Spectrum.com slash big deal for full details. Offer subject to change. Valid for qualified residential customers only. Service not available in all areas. Restrictions apply. Slowman's is offering a free home security system and professional installation when you use their low-cost central station monitoring. Call 1-800-ALARM-ME. That's 1-800-ALARM-ME. The Honda you want is here. Now's the perfect time to drive in the moment with the rugged and capable Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot. Find your adventure with great offers now available on the Honda you want. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 2.9% APR on a 2024 Honda Passport or Ridgeline and a 3.9% APR on a 2024 Pilot. Contact your local Honda dealer for a great deal today. See dealer for financing details. 
Hi, fans. This is Ross Rothenberg of the Rothenberg Law Firm. A great manager once said, baseball is like driving. It's the one who gets home safe that counts. From my family to yours, drive safe. The Rothenberg Law Firm. Injurylawyer.com. Diving for that grounder got you grounded? Oof. We've got specialists for that. Coaching Little League leave you in big league pain? We've got specialists for that. Orland & Cohen's top orthopedic team has a specialized expertise, extensive training from the nation's best programs, and years of experience so you can feel better, faster. Long Island's premier orthopedic group with offices open seven days a week. Orland & Cohen is now in Kew Gardens, too. Visit OrlandCohen.com. Pat McCarthy here, and I'd like to tell you about my alma mater, the College of New Jersey. At TCNJ, you get the best of both worlds. A top-notch education at a public college price point. TCNJ's faculty are partners in their students' success with courses that are more immersive and that offer transformational learning experiences along the way. That's higher education elevated. Come see for yourself what makes TCNJ so special. Learn more and register for an open house at tcnj.edu. New Jersey's got a lot of summer wow. We got your under the sun wows. Your this is too much fun wows. Your that wine was sublime wows. And your one more time wows. So come see what your wow's going to be. New Jersey, it's one summer wow after another after another. Find your wow at visit nj.org. New Jersey, little state, lot of wow. Back here at City Field, the Tigers have defeated the Mets 6-3 to three in the opener of this doubleheader. Today's game has been brought to you by the family of Casamigos Tequilas, Anejo, Blanco, Cristalino, Reposado, Mezcal, and the new Casamigas Jalapeno, brought to you by those who drink it. Well, Keith, the Mets got good starting pitching. They led 3-0. They didn't get a hit over the last six innings, and that kind of fell a little bit out of focus, too. Yeah, so they kind of wasted Sean Manaya on Monday. Adrian Hauser gives them one run over five plus today in his debut. 67 pitches. And they're good vibes early with Alvarez's two run double. But Detroit storms back to tie it little by little. A run in the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth. Mets had chances there in the ninth and the tenth to do something, but didn't. And the Tigers played it three in the top of the 11th to improve to 5 and 0. Oh. They are the lone unbeaten team in Major League Baseball. The Mets fall to 0 and 5. Totals for you for the Tigers: six runs, nine hits, no errors. They left 10. For the Mets, three runs, six hits, no errors. Listen to this: 14 left on base. Mets go two for 17 with runners in scoring position. Home run of the game belonged to Riley Green, his second. The win goes to Shelby Miller. He is 2 and 0. Michael Tonkin suffers the loss. He is 0 and 2. Time of the game, three hours and 25 minutes. Game two coming up soon. We haven't gotten a start time, but it should be. Oh, oh how he's got one. Well, anyway, <laughs> once again, the final score, the Tigers six and the Mets three in 11 innings. All right. Thank you, Keith. And uh, for Pat McCarthy, I'm Howie Rose. The final score again today, the Tigers in 11 innings win game one of our doubleheader six to three. And we just got word that uh, game two will begin at 420. So we'll be back on the air with you at 415 for the second game of our doubleheader right here on WCBS Mets Radio, driven by your Tri-Honda dealers. Good afternoon. I'm Steve Scott in the WCBS newsroom. We have a partly sunny sky and 48 degrees in New York City. 342 at WCBS. We'll get you back out to Howie and Keith at City Field for Game 2 at 415. The first pitch of Game 2 set for 420. A Suffolk County Grand Jury will not charge the Child Protective Service workers who were assigned to investigate abuse in the Thomas Valva case. The eight-year-old boy froze to death in his father's garage in 2020. Our WCBS Long Island Bureau Chief Sophia Hall with the story. 
The Suffolk County DA held back tears as he repeatedly blamed CPS workers for the death of eight-year-old Thomas Belva. Sent to school in dirty clothes while unbathed. There were ligature marks, bloody noses. Thomas was also sleeping in the unheated garage in 19-degree weather. DA Ray Tierney says teachers at the elementary school that Thomas attended flooded CPS with dozens of calls. Altogether, there were 11 reports made. All were deemed unfounded. No abuse found. The 11th report is the final report uh, before Thomas's death. And because of the unfounded status, the records are sealed. No one could find out what happened, and no CPS worker can be charged with negligence. In Hop Hog, Sophia Hall, WCBS 880 News. A woman is dead after a tree fell on her car during last night's storm in Westchester. Armonk police say the victim was driving north on Route 128 when the accident happened. 50 year old Catherine Tusiani was the only person in the car. She was the wife of a Yankees executive. An investigation into her death is ongoing. There are reports of at least four other storm-related deaths throughout the country, including one in Kentucky, one in Oklahoma, and two in Pennsylvania. The already saturated rivers in our area are once again swelling after days of nonstop rain. The storms have also knocked out power to thousands. Reporter Glenn Shuck in Patterson, New Jersey, with the latest. Jay Parliament has lived here with... Days. Because this is your time to take control of your health. And it's time to show that together, we can. Core Well Health. Michigan is helping the class of 20... Loves living here, the fourth time the Passaic over the flood stage since December. From Little Falls, Glenn Shuck, WCBS, 880 News. 345 at WCBS. What a strange sight in Hell's Kitchen today. The FDNY and Buildings Department are trying to figure out what caused thousands of gallons of water to burst out the side of an office building today. A geyser could be seen pouring out of the building at West 42nd and 9th Avenue. The leak has been capped. It's not clear how long the water was on or where it came from. No one was hurt. Our Marla Diamond is at the scene gathering information. Stay with us. We'll have more as Marla gathers that information. A Queens man will not face charges after he set up a booby trap to stop porch baseball. They're 5-0. and oh. And I did a little research, and this might not be fair, but it's kind of fun. If the Tigers do win their next two games, of course, one more against the Mets, and then tomorrow, opening day in downtown Detroit against the one-win A's, that would be a 7-0 and start. The last time the Tigers started 5-0 and and 6-0 and was all the way back in 2015. They did not make the playoffs that year almost a decade ago. The last time the Tigers started 7-0, and was back in 1984. I think I remember what they did that year. Turns out that 40 years ago, they won the World Series. Not saying it's going to happen, not saying there's any correlation there at all, but I thought that was an interesting stat when you look back to how good this team has been early in the season. And today, they look like they were toast, looked like the first loss of the season, but they find a way to get one run in the sixth, another in the seventh, then Riley Green with the big homer on a day that homers are not flying out of the ballpark in the eighth inning. And then the Tigers once again prove they're pretty awesome in extra innings as well. They get three in the 11th after holding the mats off the board in the 10th. And... They didn't score in the top of the 10th either. And all in all, the Tigers find a way to win it 6-3. to three. It's a remarkable victory for a team that just had two days off because of rain, and they remain the only undefeated team in baseball. Let's go ahead and check the defensive play of the game. Brought to you by your neighborhood Michigan Ford dealers. Buy the Built Tough F-150 only at your neighborhood Michigan Ford dealers. Visit buyfordnow.com. And a couple of plays really stick out. I think one by Gio Urshelo in the seventh inning, making sure that the Mets stayed off the board as the Tigers were trying to make the comeback. The one-two, swinging a shot. Backhanded by Urshela at third, throws down to second. And Colt Keith made a very athletic play to leap up and grab it, come back on the bag. What a pick on the in-between hop with a backhand by Urshela to take extra bases away from Taylor. Yeah, I'd like to think uh, it's been a very good early start to the season for Gio Urshela. If you remember, 
Tigers signed Urshela for $1.5 million. They were looking for a third base. He's not going to play third base every day. However, when he's been in the game and he started today, he's been very productive. Today, he was 3 of 5. He's hitting 462 on the season. He's got a 462 slugging average as well. And he's a good glove at third base, too, not to mention a couple of RBI. So early on, Gio Urshela is really working out. Now, a guy like myself said, hey, go out and get Matt Chapman, who does have about an 800 OPS. I'd say early in the season, Scott Harris seemed to know what he was doing by bringing in Gio Urshelo. He's having a really nice start to the season through five, four or five games. Go ahead, check the RBI leaderboard. It's brought to you by Bill Brown Ford. Brought to you by Bill Brown Ford in Livonia, to be specific. Let's check the RBI in this game. And I think you got to start with Andy Abanez that gets one as a pinch hitter. All he does is come into games and produces another RBI for Andy Abanez today and now if you look at it he's got three on the season Riley Green had the big time home run in the eighth inning to tie the game at three and again the conditions were really not for home runs today I saw a couple of balls really hit hard and they didn't go anywhere so the fact that Riley Green was able to launch a ball the only homer of the game to right center field almost 400 feet I mean, that was a massive poke for Green, and it could not have come at a better time as that tied the game at three. And then, of course, it went on to extras, and the Tigers end up winning it six to three. Also, Colt Keith, big time RBI. This one in extra innings. Colt Keith, not a great start to his major league career. Like, not at all. Made a couple of nice defensive plays today in the seventh inning, but you could tell the frustration on his face. Every time he's not getting a hit, he got to hit his first first game and then every time he's played since hitless so you could see the grimaces you could see the frustration and then in extra innings Colt Keith did this which I think is his tiger moment at least early on fly ball left center field it's deep on the run is Nimmo still going and that ball is off the base of the wall Riley Green had to hold up now he's rounding third heading home the throw to the plate not in time Colt Keith delivers Big drive to the base of the wall in left center. And the Tigers take a 4-3 lead in the 11th. A lot of pressure on Cole Keith. I don't think there's any question about that. Tigers signed him to a massive contract, $26 bucks, before he even played a major league game. And I think he showed early on he's really good defensively because today he was able to corral a wild Gio Urshelo throw. Also made the last out of the sixth inning on a nice grab on a Francisco Lindor liner as well. So I think he's proving to people he's got a glove. But people do wonder, is he going to hit? And early on, the question or the answer was no. No, but the fact that he was able to rake that double right there and scored a couple runs and really get his Tiger moment, you got to believe that took a lot of pressure off Colt Keith. So that's a huge hit for Colt Keith in extra innings. Here's the other thing, by the way. How good are the Tigers in extra innings so far? In five games, they've gone to extras three times. Of course, they've won all the games. And in extra innings, especially against the Mets, you saw what they did on Monday. They scored five runs. Today in extra innings, they find a way to score three runs. And they're not all blast. Balls are just finding holes and dropping in the extra frame. So you like to see the offense in the first nine innings, but if it takes going to extras, the Tigers seem very comfortable playing extra inning ball games. Also, the other two RBIs for the RBI leaderboard go to Gio Urshelo. We already talked about his game, but he was two or three of five today with two RBI. Tigers win it six to three. They go for the sweep of the Mets coming up here in minutes. Also, they go for a 6-0 start. And, of course, they come back for opening day tomorrow to downtown Detroit. That's going to be a Tiger ball club that's kind of tired. But I got to believe the fan base, it's going to be sold out at Comerica Park. Pretty sure the fan base will energize them just a bit. Oh, and then, by the way, Tarek Skubal is going to be on the bump as well. So it's going to be a great day in downtown Detroit tomorrow. Add that to the fact that the Red Wings play at 7 o'clock, a massive game against the Rangers. It's going to be a great day in Detroit. And if the Tigers can find a way to beat the Mets just one more time, Tigers 5-0, Mets 0-5, that would be a sensational start to the season in 
probably makes tomorrow just a little bit better. We'll come back. We'll check the game recap. Tigers 5-0 and to start the season. Heck of a comeback today in Game 1. You're listening to Detroit Tigers Baseball. There are trucks. Then there's the truck. GMC Sierra. With available features like the V8 engine. The ultimate luxury interior. And of course, the available world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra, not just any truck, the truck. GMC's continued commitment to professional-grade engineering is on full display at your local GMC dealer. Come take a test drive today and see for yourself. We are professional-grade GMC. Well-qualified buyers get 1.9% APR on GMC Sierra light-duty models, plus no monthly payments for 90 days. See your local GMC dealer today. Length of contract limited. Deferred monthly payments for 90 days. Excludes residents of Pennsylvania. Must finance with GM Financial. Down payment required at signing if applicable. Finance charges accrue from date of financing. Some customers will not qualify. Not available with lease and some other offers. Take new retail delivery by 4-30-24. Stories. We love to hear them. We love to tell them. Even more, we love to be in the moment our stories are born. Like the trips we take to the forest, to the campground ball field where your little girl got her first base hit. Little moments like these create stories that last a lifetime. So here's to the next trip. Here's to the next story. General RV, come home with a story. One bite of 100% Angus Beef Ballpark Frank and you'll say... Hello, Summer. Ballpark Franks. They plump when you cook them. It's time to take a bite out of summer and fire up the grill, America, because... Oh, yeah. It's ballpark season. And another aging relievers for the Mets. This time it was Adam Atavino. He's 38 years old. He's one year older than Diekman. And he threw a pitch that he would love to have back to Riley Green. On a day that the ball flat out was not traveling, that means nothing to Riley Green. What a swing. What a bomb. We're all tied up. The 1-1. One, one. Swinging a fly ball. Right field. Deep. Going back. Marte looking up. And it's gone a home run. Riley Green delivers in the eighth. We're tied at three. Absolute blast. 394 feet to right center field. Impressive blast for Riley Green. That's his second of the season. And we're all tied up at three. And as you know, the Tigers, they're used to playing in tie games. This one went to extras. Third time in five games to start the season that the Tigers go to extra innings. And they're rather good in extra innings because they just keep winning these ball games. So the 10th inning, nobody scored. Tigers didn't score in the top half of the 10th. That means you get the ghost runner at second base for the bottom half of the 10th for the Mets. And Brett Beatty had one of the worst at-bats I've ever seen in my entire life. I guess there's a philosophy, if you buy into it, that if you are tied and you're the home team and you got a guy on second base, might as well try to bump the guy over. Beatty tried once, foul ball. He tried again, foul ball. 0-2, nobody in their right mind is going to bunt an 0-2. He swung, didn't think he swung, struck out. Got to go down as the worst at-bat, not trying to be mean, of the early season. So the New York Mets, because the Tigers' bullpen is just that good, held off the board, which means we go to the top of the 11th. And with a couple men on, we already told you about Colt Keith delivering with a big-time double over the head of two Mets outfielders. And then Gio Urshela. Made sure in a 4-3 game to score a couple more. Swinging the hop line to center field. Will it drop? It will! A base hit! Two runs will score! Gio Urshela delivers with two outs in the 11th. And the Tigers take a 6-3 lead. 6-3, and you know the Tigers' bullpen does not give up any runs. Today it was Wentz, Lang, Chafin, Foley, 
Miller who gets the win and he pitched hey, two innings. Make sure everybody votes oh, in the poll. Who's going to win today? For the match. Let me know. Lane Support gave up a channel. walk. Foley gave up two walks. Miller gave up two walks. Miller had four strikeouts. Lang had a couple. And Chafin and Foley had one each. Tigers bullpen now 23 and two-thirds innings. One run. One run they've given up in 23 and two-thirds innings, and today was no different. Mets unable to get any runs, and the Tigers take the first game with the double dip, the second game of the season, or series rather, 6-3. to three. Now, we did say we talk about Casey Mize, and his final stat line, probably not one that he's going to love. Four and a third of five hit three run baseball, couple walks and four strikeouts as well. But Casey Mize overall, I don't think the stat line tells the complete story. You look at the hits and you look at the runs. He threw 87 pitches, 56 were strikes. Mize generated 10 whiffs, five with a very impressive splitter. And if you're wondering about the pitch usage, 34 fastballs, 29 sliders, 22 splitters, which was really effective at times, and he used it as his out pitch multiple times. Also, the velocity was good for Casey Mize. 721 days without pitching at the bigs. 95 mile per hour for his average fastball and his fastest fastball today was 96.8 miles per hour. So very impressive outing for Casey Mize. Also, talk about Joey Wentz real quick, too. Joey Wentz was awful last year. Not trying to be rude. 690 ERA over 105 innings of work. Had a whip of over 1.6 in the offseason. Really went to work reshaping his fastball. And he made the team. I don't think anybody thought he was going to make the team. People thought it was going to be Bo Brisky. No, Brisky was stuck in Toledo. Wentz makes the team. And today he was really impressive. One and two thirds of one hit. One walk, one strikeout baseball. Now, the hit did give up a run that was charged to Casey Mize, but Joey Wentz had not pitched all season long. I get it. Season's only five games long, but he was pretty impressive when he finally got in today. A.J. Hinch was saving a spot like this for a guy like Joey Wentz, and I thought he was pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Detroit Tigers Baseball. It's opening week of Major League Baseball. Talk baseball all year long on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM 89, and the all-new Sirius XM app. Tigers, the only undefeated team in all of Major League Baseball. They take out the Mets in game one of a double dip. It's 6-3 to three was the final. In about 18 minutes, we'll get you the lineups, and we'll send you back to City Field for game two of the doubleheader. Dan Dickerson and Bobby Scales will have the call for you. There is one more quick note about this game that might go unnoticed, but for the second game in a row against the Mets, Tigers got kind of lucky. Now, I guess you make your own luck, but Edwin Diaz is back. When you hear Timmy Trumpet, sorry, I shouldn't do it. I apologize, but it's a very catchy tune. But when you hear Timmy Trumpet, you know you're in trouble because that means Diaz is coming in. And today it took them all of 12 pitches, nine strikes. Two strikeouts to take care of Carson Kelly, Gio Urshela, and Zach McKinstry. So for a second time in a row, the Tigers got really lucky because they saw a guy like Edwin Diaz, a great closer. And we all missed him last year, but they saw him when the game was tied instead of when they were down. If you see him when you're down, if it's a safe situation, you're toast. Luckily for the Tigers, now Monday's game and today's game, he came out in a tie ball game, and I got to believe you don't see him in game two, even if there is a safe situation. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe I am because the Mets are 0-5, and they're desperately seeking a win here. But Edwin Diaz, good for the Tigers. They saw him in a non-safe situation. Tigers win it 6-3. to Double dip game two coming up next. We'll come back. We'll check the out-of-town scoreboard, plus so much more. You're listening to Detroit Tigers Baseball. Hey, it's Taylor. April 7th. It's finally here. Beginning this Sunday for one month. Sirius XM, Channel 13, Taylor's version.
The Women's NCAA Tournament is on Sirius XM. It is going to be fun. It is going to be interesting. For the best guests. Don Staley. I just want us to be who we've been. And coverage of March Madness. Tune in to Sirius XM SEC Radio from the biggest stars. Reese, put back is good. Nobody wants any part. No part of it. Of Angel Reese right now. To the top teams. We've got you covered through the National Championship in Cleveland. It's all on Sirius XM SEC Radio Channel 374 and the all-new Sirius XM app. March Madness is finally here. For the best analysis, the Big Ten is really good basketball. And coverage of the Big Ten team and the NCAA tournament. Tune in to Sirius XM Big Ten Radio. From the title contenders to the Cinderella teams, we've got you covered through the national championship in Phoenix. We really don't know how teams are going to respond in March because they're all new to each other. It's all on Sirius XM Big Ten Radio, Channel 372, and the all-new Sirius XM app. You love listening to baseball. You love talking about baseball. You love yelling at your buddies about baseball because they love baseball, and so do we. That's why Sirius XM has the only channel on the radio dedicated to baseball 24-7. It's MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89. News, opinions, passionate baseball talk from former players and GMs, plus interviews with players, managers, and executives, and much, much, much more. If you can hear me right now, you've got MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89, and on the Sirius XM app. The most important person in sports is you, the fan. Let me tell you something. I'm a real fan. And your place for sports talk is Mad Dog Sports Radio, where your voice is heard all day long. I couldn't wait to get into the truck, turn on 82. Share the thrill of victory. The joy, the jubilation. I can't stop smiling. And the agony of defeat. When is this franchise going to realize people really care about this? Passionate sports fans call 888-MAD-DOG-6. You gotta love sports. Mad Dog Sports Radio, Channel 82, or anytime on the Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win whichever fantasy sport you play. Right now on Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Base hit! Tigers win! Tigers fans, this is A.J. Hinch, and you're listening to Tigers Baseball on Sirius XM. At the track, at the wall, at both gone! Welcome back to the 1-800-CALL-SAM studio. Jeff Rieger with you. Killing a little time between games. We get you ready for game two. We do have lineups. Game two at City Field. Tigers trying to go 6-0 and to start the season. Trying to sweep the match. Trying to sweep a doubleheader as well before they come back home. Opening day tomorrow in downtown Detroit. Going to be a tired team. But uh, I'm pretty sure they'll be a little less tired if they come home 6-0 and instead of 5-1. and Nonetheless, very impressive start to the season. Go ahead and check the out-of-town scoreboard. It's brought to you by Meyer, proud hometown partner of the Detroit Tigers. And looking at games today, there's not a whole lot of them. In fact, if the Tigers did not get rained out the last couple days, you're only looking at four games on the first Thursday of the season. Guardians and Twins about to get going. It's going to be Bieber versus Lopez. How about the Guardians? They're 5-2 and two to start the season. They're on a 10-game road trip to start the year before they get to opening day at Progressive Field. That's on Monday. Apparently, they're making all kinds of renovations in Cleveland with their stadium, so they had to push it back, and the Guardians had to stay on the road to start the season. Twins are 3-2. and two. Of course, the Twins, who many believe will win the AL Central, although... Considering the Twins are 3-2 and two and there's another team in the division that's 5-0, and oh, maybe you change your mind. Other games later today, Marlins and Cardinals. Marlins off to a dreadful start. Let's not forget they were pretty good last year. They're 0-7 to start the season. That's going to be Weathers versus Lance Lynn. Weathers off to an 0-1 start with a 6.75 ERA. Cardinals 3-4, and four, that game in St. Louis. 4-0-5. A delayed start, Nationals and Pirates. Pirates were undefeated yesterday. Then the Nationals beat them by a couple of runs. Now they're 5-1, and one, leaving the Tigers, of course, the only undefeated team in all of Major League Baseball. It's Pirates and Nationals in D.C., 4 5 first pitch. It's going to be Perez versus Grays Jr. Kind of different ERAs in this one. Perez has a 2.08 ERA. Grays Jr., 15.75. Not very good. 
Also, how about some AL Central matchup at 740? Kansas City and the Chicago White Sox. White Sox finally found a way to win a game. They're one and four. Royals, not much better. They're two and four. That game at Kaufman at 740. It's going to be Soroka versus Lugo. Soroka, a 7-2-0 ERA. Lugo has yet to pitch this season. Of course, we're waiting for our second game. It's going to come your way in about 11 minutes. It's going to be Matt Manning on the bump. The 27th man for the Tigers for this doubleheader. We'll come back. We'll tell you all about Matt Manning, who comes up from the minors to start against the Mets. Mets are 0-5. Tigers are 5-0. What happens in Game 2? We find out in about 10 minutes. You're listening to Detroit Tigers Baseball. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families. A legacy of capability and technology that has made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Based on 1977 to 2023 calendar year total sales. Nationwide, the average wait for an appointment with the doctor is 26 days. At McLaren, we're working to see you sooner. Our network of primary care providers is growing throughout Michigan, and we are opening access to make more appointments available. This way, whether you're a new patient or have been with McLaren for years, our providers are available when you need them. To find a primary care provider ready to see you sooner, visit mclaren.org slash primary care. Hurry up and try new Little Caesars Crazy Puffs. They're four fun-sized Crazy Puffs packed with layers of pepperoni, cheese, and sauce, and perfect on the go. Enjoy Crazy Puffs on a unicycle. What? In a hot air balloon. Or riding piggyback on your friend Keith. Faster, Keith, faster. Can I have a delicious Crazy Puff? Sorry, Keith, they're too tasty. Whee! Try new Little Caesars Crazy Puffs on the go for only $3.99. Pizza, pizza. Available in participating locations. Prices may vary. Prices higher in Alaska, Hawaii, and third-party online sites, plus tax. After a car accident, people need to hire a lawyer more than any other time. And your decision has to be made fast. So call Figer Law first. Our team of trial lawyers will get you the money you deserve. Because nobody has won more auto cases than we have. Figer Law. All we do is win. Official law firm of the Detroit Tigers. All we do is win. Welcome on back. 1-800-CALL-SAM Studios. Check the next game preview. The next game comes your way in about eight minutes. Tigers and Mets game two of the double dip. Game one goes to Detroit. They're now 5-0 and after fighting their way back from a 3-0 deficit. Looking at the lineup for game two, Parker Meadows will lead off. He'll play center. Torque's going to be at first base. Kerry Carpenter is in right field hitting third. Riley Green will DH. Of course, Riley Green had the big bomb in the eighth inning in game one. Mark Kana will get left field. He's going to hit fifth. Colt Keith back in there. He's young. It's understandable. He had a big poke in extra innings. He's going to play second base. Then 7-8-9 is Andy Abanias at third. Javier Baez at short. Jake Rogers will do the catching. Of course, Baez did not play in game one, so this will be his first game today. Matt Manning is going to be on the bump. Of course, Matt Manning did not make the team last year. 3-5-8 ERA, about 78 innings of work. And I think a lot of people thought Manning would make the squad. Interesting quote for him when he came back up saying, listen, it's about do I enjoy playing baseball or do I enjoy the business? And he said in the minors, he figured out that he really enjoys playing baseball. So big spot for Matt Manning, the 27 man of the roster and he's going to go today against Jose Buto. So we got Tigers and Mets. It's game two of the double dip and now let's get you after this commercial break to Dan Dickerson and Bobby Scales. Enjoy the baseball everybody. We'll catch you afterwards. You're listening to the Detroit Tigers Radio Network. Detroit Tigers baseball brought to you by the Sam Bernstein Law Firm. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. General RV. Flagstar Bank. Corwell Health, the D Las Vegas, Meyer. Everybody, make sure America, you hit that like button, Priority, hit that subscribe button, and if you're new, join the channel. Little Caesars Pizza. They are among the greatest to ever play their sports. Caitlin Clark is the all-time 
scoring leader. They are legends and icons. Larry Bird hit the jump with no second thought. I don't know how he did it. And you can hear them right now on the all-new Sirius XM app. We are here with Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark. I'm so focused on winning. It's never anything I ever take for granted. Here comes Larry Bird, the Hall of Famer, and he just won Legend of the Year. Legend of the Year, isn't that something? For access to the game's greats, we lie on the leader in sports audio. Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. This is the Detroit Tigers Radio Network. I'm attorney Mark Bernstein. When people contact us, they always ask, is this call and consultation really free? The answer has always been yes, it's free for over 50 years. It's always been free. A free call, a free consultation, and we don't get paid unless we win your case. That's our no-fee guarantee. Get a free consultation at 1-800-CALL-SAM or callsam.com. It's always free. 1-800-CALL-SAM. Are you ready? Ready to find the right care that works for you? Care that connects you to what you need anytime, anywhere, and fits best with your lifestyle? Whether it's in person or in your pajamas, online or over the phone, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan connects you to the care you need when you need it most. With the largest network of doctors and hospitals, an easy-to-use mobile app, and a 24-hour nurse line. Because we're always ready to help. Learn more about Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan at bcbsm.com. Get in the game with Sarah Chevrolet Sterling Heights. As the number one volume Chevy dealer in Michigan, they're the team that's always hitting it out of the park. And with new trucks and SUVs arriving daily, you can test drive and take home your new Chevy today. So hurry into Sarah Chevrolet Sterling Heights, where customer satisfaction is their number one priority. And then drive away a winner. Sarah Chevrolet Sterling Heights, 17 and a half in Van Dyke in Sterling Heights. Call 87-SAY-SARAH or go to saysarah.com. Together, let's drive. Wing, there's a drive to left. That one is long. 124 years of baseball tradition continues. And it's going a home run. Brought to you by the Sam Bernstein Law Firm, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, General RV, Flagstar Bank, Corwell Health, The D Las Vegas, Meyer, Comerica, Priority, UWM, and Little Caesars Pizza. Here's what's happening on Sirius XM Sports. The Final Four women's and men's basketball tournaments are set. Sirius XM College Sports Radio 84 with a thorough analysis of how each school got there and which ones could be cutting down the net as champion. Your March Madness home, Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84, and the new Sirius XM app. Sirius XM Sports, wherever you are, your team plays here. It's time to play ball with the call of the game from the Metro Detroit Buick GMC Dealers broadcast booth. This Odyssey Sports broadcast is presented by Health Markets. Shop for health insurance your way. Sunny skies, breezy, still chilly, but you know what? It feels a little bit warmer when you've won game one of a doubleheader in five straight to start a season. Absolutely it does. Hello again, everyone. We're getting ready for game two of a doubleheader, the wrap-up of this road trip. It's a 5-0 and road trip to start the season, a 5-0 and start to the season. Opening day in Detroit is tomorrow, and Bobby, no matter what happens in game two, it's a successful road trip. Heck, it was with a win in game one on Monday night here in New York. But this is really something to watch the way this time. Every game is close. Every game is going into extra innings, it feels like, right now. And the Tigers are finding ways to win. But it's being led by really what we thought, pitching and defense. Yeah, it's no big secret coming into to the season what the strength of this ball club was going to be. It was going to be the pitching. It was going to be the, the defense. You pair that together. It's the run-preventing environment. If this Tiger team hit at all, you were going to have a, it was going to be a fun summer. It's starting out real fun already. Tigers win game one with three runs in the 11th inning. So again, in the 10th inning, neither team scored. The Tigers have had to have clutch pitching in every game because every game has been close. The one five nothing win was 0-0 through nine. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Matt Manning gets the start for the Tigers in game two. Jose Buto is on the mound for the Mets. Mets are taking the field. Let's check today's game two starting lineups with Bobby. Thank you, Dan. And the lineups for your Detroit Tigers in game two of this doubleheader here in the final game of this series from New York. They'll go this way. Leading off, playing center field is Parker Meadows. At first base, batting second is Spencer Torkelson. Kerry Carpenter is going to play right field. He'll hit third. Riley Green will DH and 
bat fourth. Mark Cannon out in left field. He'll hit fifth. Batting sixth, Colt Keith playing second base. Andy Baez at third base, batting seventh. Javier Baez at shortstop in the eight hole. And batting ninth is the catcher, Jake Rogers. For the Mets, they'll go this way. Brandon Nimmo will DH leading off. The shortstop, Francisco Lindor, bat second. In the three hole is the polar bear, Pete Alonzo, over at first base. Rick Beatty's at third base, batting fourth. Hitting fifth in right field is Starling Marte. Playing left field in this game, Tyrone Taylor. He'll hit sixth. Omar Navarez is behind the plate, batting seventh. Hitting eighth is the center fielder, Harrison Bader. And Joey Wendell will bat ninth and play second base. Tigers come in with a record of 5-0. and oh. The Mets are 0-5. Oh our keys to the game are brought to you every game by Sarah Chevrolet. Pitching matchups brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Visit by Toyota.com. Toyota Let's Go Places. Again, the pitching matchup, Jose Buto against Matt Manning up from the minor leagues. He's the extra player for the doubleheader. We'll talk about him in a moment. Keys to the game again brought to you by Sarah Chevrolet. The keys for the Tigers against Jose Buto, a guy that most of them have never seen before. Well, Jose Buto has a... a Features two types of fastballs. It's mainly a four-seam fastball. He'll mix the occasional sinker in there, but it's fastball, slider, changeup. Uh, just about 65% of the pitches he throws are going to be either that fastball or the slider. The changeup, though, is his best off-speed off -speed pitch with good sinking action. Parker Meadows in the leadoff spot. Game time weather brought to you by Clean Express Auto Wash. The official car wash of the Detroit Tigers. Fast, easy, clean, and free vacuums. Tigers 5-0, and the Mets 0-5, and, and the Tigers now get ready to face the 26-year-old native of Venezuela, Jose Buto, the first pitch of the game, low and away, and we are underway here at City Field in New York. So glad to have you along. The last game of the road trip, second game of a doubleheader, 6-3 win for the Tigers in 11 in game one. 1-0 pitch for a strike on the outside edge. Nick Lentz is our home plate umpire today. Emilio Menez at first. Lance Barksdale at second. John Bacon is today's third base umpire for game two. In tight at third for Beatty. The 1-1 one -one pitch, swing and a miss. Quickly one ball, two strikes. Buto just up. He's the extra man for the Mets in this series. 42 innings with the Mets. Pretty solid last year. Command is the issue. He will walk you. The 1-2. Swing and a fly ball, hooking foul down the right field line. Yeah, Buto features that four seam fastball but his changeup he throws it about 23 percent of the time it's got really good sinking and fading action on it right he works over on the third base side of the rubber the one two high and away with the fastball a lot of movement on that pitch up and away from Parker Meadows Left side of the infield shifts to the right. Beatty and Lindor, the 2 2. Swing and a miss. And they got Parker Meadows to chase a changeup up and away. A lot of movement away from left handed hitters on that changeup. It's not so much a downer, but it does move. It runs quite a bit to his arm side, which is away from a left handed hitter. Brings out Spencer Torkelson, one for six in game one. First pitch, slider low and away, ball one. First pitch is brought to you every game by McLaren Health, the official health care system of the Detroit Tigers, and the first inning by Rocket Mortgage. Buy, sell, finance, save. Just underway. The one out of Torkelson off the plate inside. Carpenter waiting on deck. So again, Meadows, Torkelson, Carpenter. The first three to face Butto. The shadows from the third base roof line are going to be an issue right from the start of this game the 2-0 down below the strike zone Nick Lentz says quickly 3-0 on Torkelson Buto last year 42 innings of work hard to hit only gave up 33 hits 212 batting average against and low power numbers Torkelson takes strike on the inner half of the plate a fastball sneaks in on the inside part of the plate the problem for him was the walks. Walk rate of five with a strikeout rate of eight. That just won't lead to future success. Kind of lucky to have an ERA of 360. 3-1, three, soft ground ball to third. Beatty will charge, bare hand throw, and didn't get him. Bang, bang at the base. What a nice play by Beatty. He did everything right, bare hand and through. That is not an easy play, and he almost got Torkelson. It'll be an infield base hit. No, like you said, I mean, it, it was the only play he had. It was a do-or-die play. He was playing back because Torque was up. Big, strong right-hander, right-handed hitter. But 
Torque sniffed out a knock and beat it out down there. And he'll <laughs> yes, take he it did. too. You, hey, you take those. When you get some of those, you will absolutely take them. Goes down as a line drive in the book, man. And when you get hits like that, and you get a couple, he got one in game one. All of a sudden, they can maybe ignite something, right? It, it ha I'm telling you, the psychology of a hitter, it's a hit. <laughs> and it helps. You got the first base, and no one threw you out or caught the ball you hit. And that is all that matters. Kerry Carpenter batting. First pitch, backdoor breaking ball misses. Low and away. That was the changeup low and away to Carpenter. Four for 11 start to the season for Kerry. So the roof line shadow from the third base side is starting to cross the third baseline. It's already deep into left field because it angles. Swinging a fly ball softly into left center. Charging hard is the left fielder Tyrone Taylor. He's going to throw back to first, but Torkelson will make it easily. Little pop fly. Taylor had to run a long way. Made the easy catch in the end. And a strong throw to first. Torkelson had to hustle back. Two outs that leaves up the really the, the hero in game one. Riley Green on a day when the ball, let's face it, is not jumping in this ballpark. It is doing the opposite of that. <laughs> no, you're right. And he had a home run in the eighth inning to tie the game at three to four extra innings. Upright, relaxed stance for Riley. Just a classic relaxed, upright stance. First pitch is low and in. Change up pulled down and in by Buto. Short, cautious lead for Torkelson at first. 1-0 pitch. Fastball moves away in his 42 innings of work. Buto, right-hander, much tougher on lefties last year. You would think it's back to that changeup that you talked about as the most effective secondary pitch. It really does. It's got good action on it. The thing is he's got to be in the zone with his other stuff more to make it more effective. The 2-0. Up and away. Good take. And now already two batters have seen 3-0 counts, and this is... The Mets need a few innings from this guy. He's already made one start in the minor leagues, much like Matt Manning, who will start for the Tigers in game two. Went five innings, but Carlos Mendoza emptied his bullpen in game one. Fastball paints the outside edge, grabs it for a called strike one. Nick Lentz goes up with the right hand. No, he, he really did, and it was it was a little bit curious. Not you know, you know you got two games a day, and sure you're trying to you're trying to grind out a win to get the first one of the year, but he used seven of his nine relievers. Fastball outside. Riley Green draws a walk. So this, again, is what we're going to watch today. This young man is tough to hit, but he also struggles to find the strike zone. Hauser started game one, went five innings, and then it was seven relievers to cover the six innings after that. A.J. Hinch in relief of Mize used five guys. Managers generally don't like to use relievers in both games of a doubleheader. They just don't, especially for the Tigers with a game tomorrow. Canada checks his swing, didn't go, but it's all about getting a guy hot into a game, and then he's going to sit for several hours and then bring him back. That's tough to do. You really don't want to do that to your relief pitchers or any, really, any position player if you have to. Slider low and away. 2-0 on Mark Canna. So we see the command issues already for Jose Buto. Tigers with an early opportunity. Canna at the plate. Came into the game as a pinch hitter in game one. Walked a couple of times. The 2-0 pitch. Wow. Way off the plate inside. I'm ready for Narvaez to go out and have a mound visit here in the first. Yeah, this is the nightmare for Carlos Mendoza. You know, again, given his strike-throwing history, a lack thereof. To run up the pitch count even early on is going to be a tough go for these Mets. 3-0 pitch. Strike at the knees. Right on the inside edge. Cano was jumping back out of the way. Thought he'd drawn a walk. It's 3-1. and one, So every batter has seen ball one. Three batters now have seen a 3-0 count. Light tower shadows covering the mound at the moment. The 3-1 pitch. Swinging a soft foul off the foot of... Canna dribbles off to the third base side. No score and an early threat for the Tigers. Infield single for Torkelson. And Riley Green with a walk. Torkelson at second base. Green at first. 
Straight up on the left side of the infield, second baseman Wendell is shaded up the middle. The 3 2 runners go, swing and a little soft foul. So it's going to be a long first inning, no matter what happens in this canna at bat. Buto is going to throw at least 25 pitches. You had that early inning with 30 plus pitches. Almost always shortens the day. Unless your name is like Verlander or Scherzer. <laughs> they figured it out. <laughs> Runners will be off for the pitch. The 3 2 again. Swing and a soft ground ball foul. These are the at bats that Canna can give you. Just, just foul off some tough two strike pitches. Extend the at bat. Yeah, just doesn't give in. I mean, and he waits to the last minute to pull the trigger on some of these pitches, and that's okay. You're just spoiling each pitch until you get one you can handle. But Mark Cann has had some tremendous at-bats early on this season, and that's what he does, and that's why he's in this on this Tiger team. This will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. Runners go, 3-2, ground ball to short. Scooped up by Lindor, an easy toss over to first to Alonzo. Cann sees eight pitches, grounds out to end the first. Tiger strand two. But they make Buto work, 27 pitches in the first. Matt Manning taking them out. We go to the bottom of the first inning scoreless in game two of a doubleheader. Tigers took game one. This is the home of Detroit Tigers baseball. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track. Sunday. 2 p.m. Eastern. It's the Cookout 400 from Martinsville Speedway. Checker flag, baby. Yeah. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Hit the like button. 90. In the oh, car. Hit the, the like button. Sirius and XM subscribe too. Join the Get family. closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. Are you regretting eating that gas station hot dog? Yeah, we know. We've been there too. This is a message for baseball fans like you. Did you know that you get a channel that's talking baseball 24 seven as part of your Sirius XM subscription? What? Our lineup includes shows hosted by former big leaguers and executives. Plus you'll hear from 17 managers each week. MLB Network Radio is on Sirius XM channel 89 or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports, we're more than just a game. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. After the game, join us on MLB Network Radio. We're talking baseball with you all season long on Sirius XM Channel 89 and the Sirius XM app. Miller's across Michigan. Matt Manning facing the New York Mets in the bottom of the first inning. No score. Tiger Stratton did not score in the top half. First pitch to Brandon Nimmo is fastball off the plate at 94. Ball one. The Mets facing the 26-year-old native of Sacramento, California. Matt Manning, he had a good spring. He just got outpitched by guys named Reese Olsen and Casey Mize. The 1-0. Low and inside. 2-0 on Nimmo. Nimmo Lindor. Both are one for 20 to start this season. Both have drawn a lot of walks and reached by, hit by pitch in this series. They've reached seven times on walks and hit by pitch. Fastball away, not the start that Matt Manning wanted. 3-0 and oh on Nimmo. Injury shortened season last year. Two flukes. Two line drives off his foot. Two that put him on the IL. The 3-0 pitch is a strike. Fastball below the strike zone, a gift from Nick Lentz. Nimmo doesn't like the call, but he digs right back in. Deep in that left-handed batter's box, taps the outside part of home plate, the inside part of home plate, slightly open upright stance. Hands tight to the left shoulder as he cocks the bat over it. 3-1, top of the strike zone with his new hard slider, and it misses for a walk. Matt Manny revamped his stuff over the offseason and in spring training. Like Dan said, had a good spring training, just got beat out, but the stuff played and went to AAA. He did the right thing. He put out, laid a marker down in AAA and said, hey, if you need a guy, I'm going to be your guy. And here he stands in City Field today uh, for the doubleheader. 
Five inning start with seven strikeouts, and that's something that the Tigers want to see more. He has to have a certain level of swing and miss. Francisco Lindor takes the first pitch for a called strike. Matt says, I'd rather pitch to contact and work deeper into game, save my pitches. And that, that is a skill that all pitchers learn, but you do have to have a certain amount of swing and miss. Pulls the splitter. That is changeup now. He scrapped the changeup, has a splitter. It is a true splitter grip. Not a split change, but it is a splitter. We saw it in the spring. And the other thing he is learning how to do. So he's got a new bullet slider. He's got a new splitter. And he is learning. And you'd think this would be something easy. And then when you talk to Matt, you realize, as, as he's explaining it from his standpoint, it's not that easy to do. Learning to throw his four-seam fastball up in the strike zone. We'll tell you why in a second. Waiting on a 1-1 pitch, Lindor takes up and away. So fastball command is off to start early. Two and one on Lindor. But the pitch, the movement characteristics of his fastball are such that it's elite with the vertical, the lack of horizontal, which you want. The 2-1 pitch, half cut, went too far on the slower slider. Two balls, two strikes. But Bobby, he said, all my life I've been taught to throw that four-seam fastball down, so I extend and I get it out here to work that bottom rail. Throwing it up in the strike zone for him has been a real learning process, and I think that's why we saw, as he flips over to first, why we saw the first four hits of spring that he gave up were on fastballs because he was trying to learn how to throw it up in the strike zone. You, and you really do have to do that. Like you said, his entire career, his entire life, hey, Matt, get the ball down, throw it at their knees, this, this, and this, and it just gets pounded into your head until it's part of who you are. 2-2, two -two, swinging a pop-up. Sweeping breaking ball gets a pop up to second base. Colt Keith into shallow center field to make the catch, waving his arms, calling everybody off. Big first out from Matt Manning after falling behind Lindor. Two and one, he gets the pop up. And, and when you do that, when you've heard that, it really just becomes, you know, part of who you are as a player. Like, you know, you've always heard things like, well, ground balls don't go out of the ballpark, so throw the ball down on the ground. Well, here's the thing you have to have the arsenal to be effective down there. What they figured out is that Matt stuff plays better up in the zone. So he's had to make the adjustments to set his sights higher. Pete Alonzo takes the first pitch at the top of the strike zone. Slider misses up. Rogers, the catcher, likes what he sees, though, points that glove out. Keith at second base, shades up the middle on Alonzo. Dangerous hitter at the plate. Two for nine with a walk in the series. A little sidearm flick over to first. Matt Manning, very athletic, fields his position well, knows how to hold the running game. Nimmo stole a big base in game one in the ninth inning. So for Matt Manning, he's finished always. He's finished off his fastball with his finish out at, as he extends and drives to home plate. He has a certain finish to get that ball down at the bottom. He delivers a strike to Alonzo. He said for him... He's telling me in spring, now to get it to the top, he just feels like he's opening up more and kind of pushing the ball. Even if he's not, that's how it feels to him. And that's why it wasn't necessarily natural for him to start working at the top of the strike zone. Sweeping breaking ball high and tight. Alonzo turns out of the way. Crowd groans. Gets on Matt Manning a little bit. His command is off. It's 2-1. and one. Well, there's a, there's a big difference sometimes in what players feel like they're doing and what's actually happening and that's that that space right there is the space that Matt Manning is going to have to conquer if this new revamped uh, delivery and fastball usage is going to work for him. Another off-speed pitch up that's the harder slider so again fell behind Nimmo 3-0 and walked him fell behind Lindor 2-1 and got him to pop up now he's behind 3-1 and on Pete Alonzo see if he can dial it back in command is usually a strength for Matt Manning the 3-1 over the middle of the plate on well, the outside edge with the slider. So staying with a lot of sliders here. And that's the other thing a catcher has to do. That's the value of these two catchers especially. Rogers and Carson Kelly. When a guy's off with the pitch, what's his corrective pitch to get him back on track? 3-2, Nemo goes, swinging a pop-up, fouling out of play. But I'm pretty sure he's missing with a slider above the strike zone, and he doesn't want to be there. No, not not his slider. You know, you've got some guys that want to throw that slider at the top of the zone. Again, his fastball plays up there for the reasons we just talked about. But his slider, when it's down and away from right-handed hitters or down uh, in the dirt for chase, that's where he wants to be. But being able to land it for strikes is an is important piece of his equation as well. 
Nemo took off last pitch, takes off here, swinging a little pop up softly, foul and out of play. He's just thrown at least by the MLB research page that we look at that tells us what pitch based on the characteristics of that pitch six straight sliders which I find hard to believe but everyone's been 82 83 it's been, so yep. it's been about <laughs> the same pitch it's been about the same pitch. I'm a little bit shocked by that the three two swing and a miss tied him up inside the throw down to second base and Keith tried to field the in-between hop went over his glove to center field and over to third will go Brandon Nimmo he gloves that ball again it was an in-between hop not easy they would have gotten Nimmo at second it's a strikeout of Alonzo he went to the fastball the Nimmo ends up on third with a steal and a throwing error by Jake Rogers they're sending Nimmo back Looks like they're sending, sending Nemo back to first base. Wait, what? Why? Here's a strikeout of Alonzo. Are they calling, they're they, calling, interference they're calling interference on the swing. On the swing, that's right. Wow. I... I would say that's a generous call. It didn't hit Jake Rogers. The backswing is always, well, a lot of times big on those power hitters. It didn't seem like it affected his ability to get up and throws to second base. No, I, I think, you know, I think that Tigers benefited from a call there because I, it seemed like Alonzo was well within his yeah. space. He was able to occupy in the batter's box. All right, so Nimmo at first, not third. Brett Beatty at the plate. The 1-0 pitch over the plate. Wow, where was that? Look like a pretty good pitch, 2-0. and I'll tell you what also gets lost in this equation is that Matt Manning just blew Pete Alonzo away after all those sliders. He throws a fastball right at the top of the zone, right where he wanted it in to get the strikeout of Alonzo. That's a good sequence and execution. 2-0, fastball, inner half of the plate for a called strike. 92-93 on the fastball. We talk about velocity a lot with Matt Manning because... One of the things they've really worked hard on the last two years, not easing into games. If you've got 96, let's see 96 right from the start because remember, the best four hitters are the first four hitters <laughs> you're going to face. Right. And, and he did that in spring. I mean, we saw 95, 96 out of the gate in his spring starts in the first inning. We're not seeing it here today, but again, it could be a lot of factors. It's cold, we'll tell you that. The 2-1 pitch, swinging a foul out of play, and closer to 94 that time. But it matters for Matt Manning to show that velocity if he's got it that day right from the start. It really does, because if you're ineffective because your fastball's down or you're ineffective because your fastball's down and you're a little bit scattered shot with your command, you don't get to get to 96 in the fifth or sixth inning. It, doesn't, it never gets there. Give us the good stuff out of the gate and beat some people. 2-2. Fastball high and outside, just a tick under 94 in these last two fastballs. Brett Beatty batting. Again, nothing left to prove in the minor leagues. He can hit for average, hit for power. He has not shown it at the major league level. Off to a 4-for-15 start. 2-for-7 with two walks in this series. Today's game brought to you in part by Northville Lumber, the official lumber yard of the Detroit Tigers radio network. Short cautious lead at first for Nimmo. He'll be off with the pitch. The 3-2. Swing and a pop-up. Playable in the shallow right field. Keith behind Torkelson will call him off, make the catch right on the line, one step into foul territory, 20 feet beyond the infield dirt. Beatty pops out. Nimmo stranded at first. We head to the second inning in New York. A struggle for Matt Manning, but he gets through the first inning unharmed after one scoreless in the second game of a doubleheader on the Detroit Tigers radio network. Where does one community end and the next begin? Across the railroad tracks? On the other side of the river? Is it between the east side and the west side? At Comerica Bank, we believe it's all one community, and we're all part of it. That's why Comerica has invested over $20 million for affordable housing, financial education, and workforce development in lower-income communities. Because when we raise expectations for everyone, we all rise. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. 
Is it too early to start planning for our kids' inheritance? At Comerica Bank, we don't think so. But we're not talking about 401ks or trust funds or estate plans. This is about the greatest gift we can possibly pass on, a healthy planet. That's why Comerica actively invests over a billion dollars in green businesses and environmentally beneficial projects every year. Because this inheritance is too important to waste. Comerica Bank, member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. Presenting the Insurance Company Choir. No, 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 I'm attorney Mark Bernstein at the Sam Bernstein Law Firm. Tired of the same old song? Call 1-800-CALL-SAM and let us change the insurance company's tune. Yes, 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 yes. Call 1-800-CALL-SAM. Hey, baseball fans, Mike Valenti here. If you're looking for a great trip to plan, go do something fun, how about Vegas? The D.com, the D. Las Vegas. It's your home for Detroit sports in Vegas. Well, Keith, big hit in game one, takes a pitch low and in. It was a 3-3 game going to the 10th. Neither team scored. And then in the 11th, Colt Keith with runners at the at first and second double to the base of the wall and left to break the tie, make it 4-3. The Tigers would add two on under shell, a blue single. Keith takes a pitch outside, 2-0. and And Carlos Mendoza is getting a little bit nervous right now. His pitcher cannot throw strikes. 2-0 pitch, low and away, 3-0. Every batter for the Tigers has seen ball one. Colt Keith is the sixth batter. Four have seen a three-ball count. To wind up the 3-0 strike right to the middle of the plate. Keith looked like he was taking all the way. Clouds blocking the sun, and that's a good thing because it could have been really difficult to see with the way the sun and shadows were playing. Fastball up and away. Yikes. Not close. When you've emptied your bullpen just about in game one, as Mendoza did, again, A.J. used five of his eight relievers. And your starter in game two looks like he's not going to last much more than four or five innings. Not a good feeling. No, it's not. And, and the most maddening thing for Carlos Mendoza and the rest of this Mets staff has got to be the ball comes out hot. He's got pretty good stuff. Wow, fastball up and in. Has Ibanez leaning back out of the way. A big miss for ball one. Seven straight batters have seen ball one. You almost never see that. But if you don't throw consistent strike ones, it's going to be usually a long day. The 1-0. Down at the bottom of the strike zone, just below it. Matt Manning got a call like that. One ball, one strike. Early on, Nick Lentz showing that that might be a strike or is going to be a strike. The 1-1. One, one. Swinging a foul tip. Time for dollars on deck. If Javi Baez gets a hit this inning, Northville Lumber will donate to Detroit Blightbusters, helping to revitalize Detroit's neighborhoods. Northville Lumber, Michigan's oldest business and largest Trex decking dealer. Second inning brought to you by Miss Dig 811. Safety is in your hands. Dial 811 before any digging project. A 1 2 curveball misses badly, low and away. The misses are big. Big. Really big. And, the, and this, you know, the non competitive pitches are the ones that just, they, they don't do, there's no purpose in them. It's just a wasted pitch. Now you're one, close, one pitch closer to something either bad happening or being out of the game. Colt Keith takes off, swinging to miss, throw on to second base. He got a great jump. Ball goes into center field. He gets up, and he's going to head over to third, and he'll make it without a throw. That was a really nice job by Colt Keith. Big secondary lead, and then he took off, got a great jump. Steals second base, first major league steal. The throwing error has him at third with two outs for Javi Baez. Yeah, you could tell he timed him up right there really nicely. Buto paid no attention to him the entire at-bat. Colt Keith got a good feel for it. He stole that bag easily. Throw gets away, proceeds on to third base. Nice job, good base running, heads up by Colt Keith. Man at third, one out. I said two, man at third, one out. Infield drawn in tight for Javi Baez. First pitch, swing and a miss. Starts him off for the breaking ball away. 
Everybody, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and if you're new, join the channel. Beatty Lindor right up to the edge of the grass. Swing a line drive, base hit into center field. Breaking ball away, and Javi Baez drills it into center. Into score comes Colt Keith. Tigers take a 1 0 lead in the second. Good hit by Javi Baez. Shoots the ball over the second baseman's head on the breaking ball away. That ball really wasn't even on the plate, but it was up enough for Javi to do something with it. Colt Keith just trots on home. 1 0 here in the top of the second. That ball was a foot off the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Javi went down and got it. That brings up Jake Rogers. 26 pitches in the first inning for Buto. And already the makings of a long inning in inning number two. Jake Rogers doing the catch in game two. First pitch fastball. Way off the plate inside ball one. One for ten start for Jake. His one hit was a home run. Tigers have been showing some home run power early. The 1 0. Up and in. Four home. Oh boy. Up and inside corner for a called strike. Late call from Nick Lentz. Really late there. Four home runs the last two games in Chicago and then home run for Carson Kelly in game one of this series. Game one of the doubleheader. Riley Green with the home run. The 1-1. Soft ground ball foul over by the Tigers dugout on the third base side. It was fun talking with A.J. before the game about base running because, as you said, this is not a team that's going to slug. There's developing power, but we have to be able to create runs with our feet and put pressure on opposing teams with better base running this year. Flip over to first to drive Javi Baez back. No, and, and the point's well taken. I think one of the things that, you know, he continued to reiterate to us was the fact that, sure, the results are what they are, but is the process sound? Regardless of the results, sometimes you're going to have a guy be out, bang, bang, and it was a good decision to go. And sometimes you're going to have a guy be safe. Slider down and away. 2-2 two -two on Rodgers. And it wasn't the best decision, and it just kind of worked out. So you kind of have to take each one on a case-by-case uh, -case basis and, and understand the situation to understand why the player made a decision or why Joey Cora sent them in, in certain situations. It, it's not isolated, but the one thing he did tell us is we have to remain aggressive. Jake Rodgers swings and misses. Fastball high and tight and strikes out on a 2-2. Two -two. I'm looking for Javi to go over at first. Lineup turns over for Parker Meadows. Baez is a very good base runner. We just obviously don't get to see it a whole lot with the struggles offensively, especially last year. But he's a heads up base runner. He's smart. He knows when to go when the ball's in the dirt. He knows how to go first to third as well as just about anybody. Edging off a of first draws a throw. Meadows at the plate. Struck out on the change up in a six pitch at bat first time up. If you can have a long at bat and push that pitch count towards 50, you've gone a long way in shortening the day for Buto. First pitch, swing and a miss. Starts him off with that changeup, strike one. Yeah, Javi's trying to time him over there at first base. Couldn't quite get him. He's, Buto's done a pretty good job of varying his whole time since Colt Keith took off on him. Buto works third base side. There goes Baez. Pitches up and away. Now Baez throw to second. Will not get him. Good jump again by Baez. Narvaez is a catcher you will run on, and Baez made it easily into second base, his second steal of the year. Really nice job by Javi right there. Feet kept moving, got a little bit of a, just kind of a, a, a good lead and lean on him. Navarez made a good throw, made it a little bit closer than I thought it was going to be, but nonetheless, Javi's safe. The 1-1. One, one. Below the strike zone, Lindor wanted so badly to drop his knee in front of the bag. Remember, he got called on that yeah. in the spring training game. That's the new rule. You can't do that. He dropped his knee on top of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> the 2 1. Low and away with the fastball. 3 and 1 on Meadows. Torkelson waiting on deck. Tigers. Threatened in the first inning, did not score, stranded two. They have scored here in the second inning to take a 1-0 lead on the Baez single. 
scoring Colt Keith, who had stolen second, advanced to third on an error. The throwing error by the catcher, the 3 1, way outside. My goodness. I mean, when we talk about big misses, a big miss is, you know, several balls worth off the plate. His misses are a couple of feet yeah, uh, off the plate. Again, we talk about, you, you probably heard me say this quite a bit on the broadcast, but the non competitive miss. There's sometimes where. Sometimes changing the eye level with what looks like a big miss is actually a good thing. But that's a competitive miss. That's a competitive These miss. These aren't even close. And there's a lot of them that haven't been close. So you've accomplished nothing. nothing. It's a nothing pitch. <laughs> it's just a ball. You might as well put a ball on the board and keep it moving. But, I mean, there's there's nothing there's nothing competitive about that pitch you just throw. To your point, you know, a lot of times you'll get a guy 0-2. You'll get him 1-2. And you'll see Jake Rogers. You'll, you'll see Carson Kelly. Flash that glove up. Give it to me above the letters right here because we're trying to do something. If he swings at it, swings and misses, great. If he doesn't, we can go right back up there or we can go back down with, with something slider below the zone or a split depending on who's out on the mound. But these misses from Buteau are not even – they're not even competitive at all. Jeremy Hefner out to have a word and – that pitch count now indeed climbing. It's at 48. Torkelson up, two on. First pitch, swinging the ground ball, deep third. Sliding back in to stop by Beatty. Pops up, throws, and gets Torkelson by a full stride and a half at first base. The Tigers make the start of Buto. Throw 23 more pitches. He's almost at 50 through two. They take the lead on the Baez RBI single scoring Colt Keith. Head to the bottom of the second inning. Tiger trying to take a double header in New York and sweep the series. They've got a one nothing lead. This is the home of Detroit Tigers baseball. Comedy Central Radio brings you the biggest names in comedy. All day long, you'll hear the best stand-up comedy from Comedy Central's massive library. If you ever ask an adult what they did over the weekend and they say they didn't do anything, their faces light up. Every weeknight, you'll hear two half hours of comedy for your drive home. The other day, I got jealous of a dog's thigh gap. I'm not proud of that. Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Your home for incredible stand-up comedy. Search comedy on the all-new Sirius XM app. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern. It's the Cookout 400 from Martinsville Speedway. Checker fly, baby. Yeah. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car and on the all-new Sirius, Sirius XM, XM app. Oh, yeah. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. Wake up! Wake up, everybody! This is Steve Phillips from the leadoff spot on MLB Network Radio. Join me and former Major League Baseball players Eduardo Perez and Xavier Scruggs as we react to all the latest news and scores across baseball and have plenty of fun along the way. Steve, you were so right about that. I don't know if anybody else thinks we're funny, but I think we're funny. Why are you putting us or we into this? The leadoff spot, weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern on MLB Network Radio, Channel 89, and on the SiriusXM app. The UFC is on Sirius. Sirius XM. Hear all the action live from the Octagon every weekend on Sirius XM Fight Nation Channel 156. Charlie Marte takes first pitch for a called strike from Matt Manning. Starts him off with a slider. He threw a lot of those in the first inning, but he just wants to get strike one. He only threw strike one to one of the first four batters. The strike one pitch, swinging a foul back to the screen. Fastballs 92, 93, up to 94. That was a well-located 92. And again, that's his comfort zone. Is down, working that bottom rail. Because his fastball does have that terrific vertical low and away, and that's why they want him to throw it up in the strike zone. And he says, what I find is that working the bottom rail with the ball that has that ride to it. People see it down there, hitters see it down there, and they think it's going to sink below the strike zone, and it just grabs the bottom part of the strike zone. He gets a lot of called thirds. Line drive to second, two steps to his right. Colt Keith makes the catch on a line drive off the bat of Marte. And you do notice he gets a lot of called third strikes, but you can't rely on your strikeout rate being held up, propped up by a lot of called thirds. So that's why the, the swing and miss is what we'll be watching with Matt Manning this year. I think he's got more weapons. And if we see that fastball at the top to help him get swings and misses down, I think that that'll be a very good sign. First pitch slider strike on the inside corner to Tyrone Taylor. Right-handed batter. 
One nothing Tigers are in the bottom of the second. Six six righty working middle of the rubber the strike one. Slider away one ball one strike so he's still got the slower. Bigger breaking slider goes into the books as sweeper the. New category for sliders that has grown in the last two years the one one. Fastball away check swing appeal to first. Emilio Menez says he did not go two and one on Tyrone Taylor. Got the harder bullet slider which we have not seen today. Really maybe once or twice. Fastball curve in the splitter now the two one. Fastball in the dirt. I don't think we've seen the, the curveball either from Matt. I, I think maybe we saw one. Uh, but he's still got the full complement of pitches. Yes he does. And again it's just it, it's all based on the fastball. That's the bottom line. Three one high and tight. He's really off with his command right now. He's fighting it. Not quite as much as Buto because the misses aren't that big but he's definitely fighting things right now. Let's pause right now for station identification. This is the Detroit Tigers video. It's opening week of Major League Baseball. Talk baseball all year long on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM 89, and the all-new Sirius XM app. Omar Narvai steps to the plate. He swings, fouls it out of play. You want to attack this guy with fastballs. And he fouls a fastball out of play. Narvai has stuck around. Anytime you see a catcher in his 30s still around, it's because they like his ability to handle the staff even it may not be obvious by the numbers defensive metrics for catchers can be a little bit dicey because the value of catchers for most managers is how does he call a game <laughs> how does he handle the staff well Narvaez doesn't hit much at all anymore but he's still around swinging a pop up softly into center going out Javi Baez he'll backpedal make the catch in shallow center field little pop fly for the second out here in the second inning two outs a man on first for Harrison Bader. Yeah and with Narvaez it's it's a couple things number one he handles the staff he's a veteran guy there's got the respect of every pitcher in that in that Mets clubhouse and bullpen but more importantly too they think they've got something real in Francisco Alvarez and what a better guy to learn from than a guy who's been around as long as Narvaez and served in the capacities he served in. Winks up Harrison Bader again bottom part of the order. Matt Manning wants to attack these guys but he's his all he's just off right now. Last year walk rate was below two and a half per nine that's strong 78 innings of work and 15 starts really 13 starts because two were very short starts one rain one injury swinging a foul over the screen down below us one and one on Bader a 350 ERA there was some good fortune in that because of the low strikeouts there was a very low batting average on balls in play that almost always corrects. And that's why you need more swing and miss. And the contact was hard last year. So again, good fortune in his 350 ERA. But we're seeing better stuff, or we did in spring. Everything's just a little bit off today. Slider, check swing, went too far on the appeal. Jimenez says he went too far. One and two on Harrison Bader. 240 career hitter, and uh, it's been a tough go for him the last couple of years with the Yankees. St. Louis swinging a pop foul right below us. We're perched above home plate just to the first base side. Clouds have moved in. They're blocking the sun. That's good for hitters. Chilly day in New York. It's been a chilly few days. The one two is swinging a pop up softly down the right field line. Long run for Torkelson tracking it. He will make Did you a hit the very like button? nice catch over Come by on, the hit the like button. Right and subscribe by the too. He was Join the family. tracking it. Not an easy play at all. And he made a fine catch. Torkelson makes the catch on the pop up. Put a little star next to that one. We head to the third inning. One nothing Tigers after two on the Detroit Tigers radio network. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families. A legacy of capability and technology that has made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Based on 1977 to 2023 calendar year total sales. 
Hurry up and try new Little Caesars Crazy Puffs. They're four fun-sized Crazy Puffs packed with layers of pepperoni, cheese, and sauce, and perfect on the go. Enjoy Crazy Puffs on a unicycle. What? In a hot air balloon! Or riding piggyback on your friend Keith. Faster, Keith, faster! Can I have a delicious Crazy Puff? Sorry, Keith, they're too tasty. Whee! <laughs> try new Little Caesars Crazy Puffs on the go for only $3.99. Pizza, pizza. Available in participating locations. Prices may vary. Prices higher in Alaska, Hawaii, and third-party online sites, plus tax. You just slept on it funny. I think it's supposed to be that color. Oh. It's probably just something you ate. That'll clear right up with some aloe. Some chicken soup will have you back on your feet in no time. Hmm, not sure. But Mom will probably know. Don't rely on guesswork. For 85 years, Blue Cross has been providing Michiganders with access to the care and resources they need. And we'll be ready to help for the next 85 years. College funding throwing you a curveball? The Michigan Achievement Scholarship could help. Don't leave thousands on the field. Fill out the FAFSA today. Learn more at mi.gov achievement. One nothing Tigers. Kerry Carpenter leads off three, four, five hitters against Jose Buto here in the third. Buto making a spot start just as Matt Manning is. You're allowed to call up an extra player for a double header. Carpenter swings and misses. And think of what that does for the Tigers rotation. A, you get to call up really a major league pitcher in Matt Manning to fill in in a double header. He'll be going back to Toledo. That was really kind of a bonus, and that just speaks to the depth the Tigers have in the rotation. Ground ball to second base off the bat of Carpenter, gathered in by Joey Wendell. An easy flip over to Alonzo at first. Carpenter hit it hard, but on the ground. One up, one down here in the third inning. And it also means that Tarek Skubal is going to do something that I can't remember the last time we've seen this. The guy who started opening day on the road gets the home opener as well. How cool is that? that that's <laughs> that's incredible. Cool. I, mean, I mean, that's pretty neat. He's going to have two first in his, his wow. arsenal in one year that some guys don't get in their whole career. That's a tremendous honor. Riley Green takes right on the outside edge, a change up down and away strike one. Walked his first time up. So Buto now has thrown strike one to the last three batters after st throwing strike one to one of the first nine batters. Maybe starting to dial it in. Misses to green. One ball, one strike. Beatty and Lindor on the left side of the infield. Shift way to the right. The outfield almost straight up on green. He swings at a fastball up and in and fouls it back to the screen. One and two. Rodney Green off to a three for 19 start. Couple of home runs. Started to swing the bat a little bit better. Starting in the last game in Chicago. The one, two. Low and away. Seeing the ball well, I think. Two balls, two strikes. He really is. The, the, the spit on some of the pitches he spat on the last few days, it's an indication. Sometimes it's not about what they're hitting. It's about what they're not swinging at that tells you how well the batters are seeing the ball. Like there, fastball away. Three and two on Riley Green. We mentioned, you know, just that simple advice from teammates. And that's the stuff that I just love, Bobby. The, the interactions that take place every day. 3-2, swinging the line drive to left field, hit it too hard. Right to the Taylor, who's in left field for game two for the second out. Good swing for Green. Injury report brought to you by McLaren Health, the official health care system of the Detroit Tigers. Everybody's healthy. Today's game brought to you in part by Meyer, the proud hometown partner of the Detroit Tigers. But just those interactions that take place every day, the learning that goes on, the pushing that these guys do for each other. But those little tidbits where... Both Carpenter and Torkelson said, hey, stay back, because he was just rushing a little bit. Just a little simple piece of advice. Those are teammates who know each other, get each other, help each other, and that's how a team can grow more quickly, maybe, than the numbers would suggest, given how young this team is. You spend the better part of 225 days a year with these same group of guys. That trio you've talked about has done so for the better part of the last three seasons. Canada takes strike two, quickly 0-2. You know how many swings in the cage, swings <laughs> off the tee, swings in batting practice, swings in the game that they've seen each other take. Those guys know each other better than anybody, any any trio you can get. I mean, that's, you'll have 
pockets of, of guys like that on each team. Canna swings and misses a flat-footed flail at a fastball away, and that's the best inning of the day for Buto. The Mets needed that, and he gave them a quick one, two, three inning going through the heart of the Tigers' order. Fourth strikeout ends the third. As Bobby said, it's good stuff when he's over the plate. We head at the bottom of the third inning, one nothing Tigers. This is the home of Detroit Tigers baseball. The 2024 NBA postseason starts in just over a week, and Sirius XM NBA Radio brings you all the action. Slam dunk! Our experts break down every game. This is what playoff basketball is all about. Cover every storyline. Prove me wrong. Prove the people wrong. And bring you every can't miss moment on the court every single night. He's gonna fire up a three for the win. Your 24-7 home for hoops throughout the playoffs is Sirius XM NBA Radio Channel 86 in the car. And on the all-new Sirius XM app. Tigers fans, your manager A.J. Hinch joins MLB Network Radio's Power Alley every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And I'm, I've never been more encouraged to be a Tiger. We have a lot of good things going. Scott Harris in his first year as president has, has, has put his fingerprints on this organization and and, and things are trending in the right directions. Managers at the mic on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM 89, and the SXM app. Get ready for the 2024 NFL Draft on Sirius XM NFL Radio. Touchdown, Caleb Williams. Catch exclusive interviews with the top prospects as they begin their journey to the NFL and hear pick-by-pick -pick coverage of the 2024 Draft from Detroit. With the first pick, the Chicago Bears select. Your home for the 2024 NFL Draft is Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. In season or out of season, the number one place for college sports is Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84. Joey Wendell leads off of the New York Mets. Spreads out in that left-handed batter's box, checks his swing on a first-pitch fastball above the strike zone at 94. Ball one on Joey Wendell. Picked up in the offseason by the Mets. And it's kind of like Harrison Bader. It's it's a struggle for him offensively right now. We felt it coming into the series. Nothing has changed my opinion about this lineup. Very pitchable once you get past the dangerous guys. Nimmo, Lindor, Alonzo, and I would include Alvarez in that group. Top four. Breaking ball strike on the outside edge breaks out the curveball. Can be a very good pitch for Matt Manning. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that a little bit more this year. Wendell just a contact hitter. There's no pop in this bat. The one two. Swinging a line drive on one hop to second base. Great adjustment by Cold Keith on a ball that really took off on him. Gloved it. Head high and throws out Wendell at first. Fine play. Now good feet, good first move, and good feet on that one-hop shot by Joey Wendell. It looked like he was expecting that ball to have backspin and skin, and I think it did. It must have hit something funny out there, and it kicked almost over his left shoulder. Good adjustment, handled it, and moved over and made, made a good strong throw to Torkelson at first base. What a quick reaction with the glove. That could have easily eaten him up. It really could have. But again, this, it all starts from the ground up on the infield, and he, Colt had excellent feet in that situation. Nimmo takes ball one. Matt Manning's pitch count was 40 through two. He'd like that pitch count to be a little closer to 30. But long first inning, quicker second inning. Now he would love to work a quick third inning. He's just continually falling behind in the count. Nimmo walked on a 3-1 pitch first time up. Fastball here misses badly. And it's 3-0 again. Nimmo went to 3-0, walked on a 3-1. Taylor walked on a 3-1 in the second inning. Two walks, one strikeout so far for Matt Manning. See if he can get back into this at bat, the 3-0. Fastball on the outer half of the plate for a called strike. Tigers don't ever want their pitchers taking something off to try to get into the strike zone. That almost always results in worse command. <laughs> the 3 1 to the heart of the plate for a called strike. Inner half, thigh high, 3 and 2 on Nimmo. Yeah, good job getting back into it. 
into this count here, 3 2 with Matt Manning, for, by Matt Manning. From the stretch, third base side, the 3 2, sl slider low and in. Nimmo, he's seen the ball well. He's only one for 20, but in this series, he has now reached a total of six times with five walks and being hit by a pitch. You want out of your leadoff That's hitter. what you want. I mean, that's the whole point of being in the leadoff spot. And it, it's, you know, you, you, he's a better offensive player than he's showing right now. He will not be one for whatever the rest of the year. You know that. He's going to break out at some point, hopefully after we leave town. But that's the value. His B day has value. He's already been on base twice today. Doesn't have a hit. Francisco Lindor swings, pops it up. Will it be playable? Rogers tosses the mass away, goes back, and he will not make the catch over the screen about a row in. Third inning today is brought to you by Birmingham Plumbing. Visit BirminghamPlumbing.com. Instant replay brought to you every game by the Sam Bernstein Law Firm. When you need the right call made, it's 1-800-CALL-SAM. 1-0 Tigers. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Banya is at third, creeps onto the infield grass, middle of the infield double play depth. Mm. Lindor swings, fouls it straight back. Fastball just a tick under 94. Lindor had a good pass at it, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He had a good grip <laughs> at that fastball. All fastballs right back to the screen are not created equal. That's right. That was a dangerous one right there. For fans, what what tells you when that one is fouled straight back? You always hear, uh, you always right on it. Not always. When Not can always. you tell that he was? Well, it's like it's when it, a hitter takes a really aggressive cut like that, and it's out in front. Yeah. When you know that contact point is out in front, and he just missed that ball, but when that you can do the same thing, but with the contact point or the point where the bat meets the ball, kind of back and yeah. and, and jammy sometimes. And it can, goes straight back. It goes so straight back. You can get fooled by that a little bit. But he's but not out in front. That's the telltale sign to you. Lindor was out in front of that yeah. one. If he barrels that one, it could be trouble. But fortunately for the Tigers, it went straight back to the screen. Something in his eye. Lindor steps out. He's behind. No balls. Two strikes. Baez at shortstop for game two. Shades up the middle. Just to the left of second base with two strikes. Ibanez backs up. He's off the line. The outfield plays Lindor. Batting lefty to pull just slightly. The 0-2 swinging a foul out of play. Well back third base side. Tigers with their outfield positioning just excel under George Lombard. Baseball info solutions, which we talk about a lot because I think their defensive system for grading defense is the very best. The 0-2 low and inside. One ball, two strikes. It's not just because my partner works there. <laughs> I've felt that for a long, long time because there's a lot of care and detail in how they go about measuring defense. There's a lot that goes into it, but they measure outfield shifting and alignment, swing and a miss. There is a really nice job by Matt Mann to get a swing and miss against a dangerous hitter with a beauty of a curveball down and in. And that's how good that curveball is. We saw earlier in the game, Matt Manning threw that to Nimmo, 1-1 mm. in an even count, hit for a strike away. And he throws this one at the back foot of Francisco Lindor. He can do nothing but swing over the top. Excellent usage of that curveball for a strike and below the zone for a chase. Pete Alonso swings and misses at the first pitch slider going back to that system. So George Lombard does a very good job. It, the, the work that goes into it's ridiculous. Positioning his outfielders and BIS baseball info solution measures that and every year to George Lombard they grade out the best in their outfield position well it's a it's it's a com combined a a uh, effort by the tiger analyst and by george himself fastball up and away and, and what happens you go into a series you, you understand what these pit these these hitters do on balls in the air you don't really worry about the line drives the line drives are what they are but the balls in the air the analyst brings something to the table george goes in there and has conversations with them and you come up with areas you want to cover you can't and this is this is you can't cover the whole pie Right. But you can cover the majority of it if you place your guys there and you know what kind of jumps and bursts they get. You can cover quite a bit of that outfield ground on balls you should catch. The ones you shouldn't, they're not a piece of the equation, but the ones you should catch are factored into it. Swinging a foul out of play. And I think, I mean, it's much more difficult to try to position your outfielders compared to infielders, right? Because infielders, there are certain guys just reliably are going to pull the ball to certain areas. 
Almost every second baseman is up the middle on a righty. Almost every shortstop is up the middle against a lefty. The outfield, it's definitely trickier. The one, two shot foul, still one and two. The George, and that's what you said, the analyst who Absolutely. helped tell you, okay, he hits the ball mostly this way when he barrels it up. That's right. Versus just he hits it this way on a routine fly. You have to make that distinction when you position your outfield. That's exactly right. You can't worry about the ones that are just going to be hits anyway. That's their hits. One, two, swing and a miss. What a good inning for Matt Manning. On a one, two, a sweeping wipeout slider gets the swing and miss strikeout of Pete Alonzo. So after a walk, back-to-back -back strikeouts of the two best hitters in this lineup, Lindor and Alonzo. We go to the fourth inning. Tigers trying to sweep a double header and come home 6-0. and oh. They've got a one nothing lead after three on the Detroit Tigers Video Network. If you're a fast learner who's good at problem solving and ready to provide outstanding client service, we've got the career for you. Come join UWM as a mortgage loan underwriter. You'll get growth opportunities, job security, and paid training. Plus, underwriters can earn up to $20,000 in potential incentives on top of their starting salary. Apply today at uwmjobs.com. Opportunity lives here. Potential incentives include stock and forgivable loan incentives, which are subject to contract terms and conditions. The McLaren Proton Therapy Center at the Carmanis Cancer Institute offers the most powerful and precise radiation oncology treatment available. Using the latest generation technology, we're able to deliver high doses of radiation to the exact size and shape of your tumor while avoiding surrounding healthy tissue and organs. That means we can eliminate cancer with an unmatched precision, resulting in fewer side effects and improved outcomes for patients. To learn more, visit mclaren.org slash proton therapy. After a car accident, people need to hire a lawyer more than any other time. And your decision has to be made fast. So call Figer Law first. Our team of trial lawyers will get you the money you deserve. Because nobody has won more auto cases than we have. Figer Law. All we do is win. Official law firm of the Detroit Tigers. All we do is win. It's baseball season, and you know what that means. It's Fago time. Nothing beats an ice-cold Fago. Fago, the one true pop. Fago is a proud sponsor of Detroit Tigers Radio. Colt Keith takes ball one from Jose Buto. Now swings and fouls. Fastball off the plate away, out of play, third base side. Time for dollars on deck. One nothing Tigers fourth inning. That means if Andy Banez gets a hit this inning, Northville Lumber will donate to Detroit Blightbusters. Helping to revitalize Detroit's neighborhoods, swinging a foul out of play, fastball middle, and I think Cole Keith is frustrated that he didn't do more with that. When he's going right, he will punish that pitch. Yeah, he will. Just such a good sign to see him hit that ball off the wall, oppo, yep. in the last game. The one two swinging a soft line drive into left field. It's going to drop for a base hit. How about that piece of hitting on a one two? He got a change up, which is a very good pitch from Budo. And that's the beauty of Cole Keith. He just went down and punched it into left field. He's a good hitter. Didn't try to do too much with it. Saved his hands and flipped it into left field. That's what good hitters do. They do stuff. They get hits. They find ways to get hits. He's going to rifle enough of this, uh, plenty of balls in his career. They also get those kinds of hits, too. That's what it's all about. Brings up Andy Ibanez. First pitch from Buto swinging a foul straight back. So again, if Ibanez gets a hit, Northville Lumber will donate to Detroit Blightbusters, helping to revitalize Detroit's neighborhoods. Northville Lumber, Michigan's oldest business and largest Trex decking dealer. Fourth inning brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. Buy, sell, finance, and save. The strike one to Ibanez. Breaking ball misses high and tight. one nothing Tigers have got the leadoff man on here in the fourth inning. Down 3 nothing in game one, going to the sixth inning. It was an Ibanez sacrifice fly in a pinch hitting appearance. They got the first run home and got the Tigers started on the comeback trail. Ground ball to short softly. Lindor down to second one, and that will be it. They had no chance to double up Ibanez. Too softly hit. Nice aggressive slide at second by Colt Keith. Absolutely. Went in there hard and clean. Pop-up slide at second base. Low hip check. 
<laughs> delivered to. That's about as much contact as you can get away with now, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you, if, if you're if you're interested, go back in the day and, and find the Hal McCrays on YouTube. Those are just fascinating to me. When you show these guys what that looked like back in the Short day. Short stops out in left oh, field by the time McCray finishes. <laughs> Javi Baez takes a strike on the inner half of the plate. You mentioned how much it rained the last two days. We were here most of the day on Tuesday, hoping for that window that never came. But one of the advantages of that being here and getting the rain delay, we got to catch up with one of our favorites. Yes, we did. <laughs> Rajay Davis visited us in the booth. He's a liaison now for the commissioner's office. It's always a good day when you get to spend a little bit of time with Rajay Davis. Now, I, if if you talk to Rajay Davis or you know him at all and you don't smile when he <laughs> when you see him. Ground ball to short. Shoot, we're not going to be able to talk much. We'll finish that conversation yeah, we when we to. come back because that it's is an good. ending ending. 6-4-3 double play. And we did have a great chat with uh, with uh, Rajay Davis the other day. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. one nothing. Tigers on top trying to sweep the doubleheader and this series in New York. This is the home of Detroit Tigers baseball. Step into spring on the all-new Sirius XM app. Feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you. Feel the sunshine break with mood-boosting melodies of happy radio. It's a beautiful day. Breezy road trip mixtapes. put your records on. Spring cleaning soundtracks. And more app-only channels, specials, and shows packed with positive vibes for the season of new beginnings. Just search Spring Breaks on the Sirius XM app. March Madness is finally here. For the best analysis. That team is going to be a tough out. And coverage of the ACC teams in the NCAA tournament. Tune in to Sirius XM ACC Radio. From the title contenders to the Cinderella teams, we've got you covered through the national championship in Phoenix. Holy smokes, what a play by R.J. Davis. It's all on Sirius XM ACC Radio, Channel 371, and the all-new Sirius XM app. You love listening to baseball. You love talking about baseball, and so do we. That's why Sirius XM has the only channel on the radio dedicated to baseball 24-7. It's MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89. News, opinions, passionate baseball talk from former players and GMs, plus interviews with players, managers, and executives, original specials, and much, much, much more. All baseball, every day, on your radio. If you can hear me right now, you've got MLB Network Radio. Sirius XM Channel 89 and on the Sirius XM app. Tigers fans, no matter where you are, you won't miss a pitch with the Sirius XM app. Hear every game all season long. Download the Sirius XM app and search Tigers. Today's game brought to you in part by Comerica Bank. Only one bank has been proudly committed to Michigan since 1849. Comerica Bank. To learn more, visit Comerica.com slash committed. Matt Manning's first pitch, bottom of the fourth. Curveball hangs high and away to Brett Beatty, left-handed batter. Popped out his first time up. Four for 16 start to the season for Beatty. And as Bobby said, they, they need this guy to hit. If this lineup is going to do anything this year, they needed additional help <laughs> for Alvarez, Alonzo, Lindor, and Nimmo, fastball up and away, swing and a miss, one and one. Yeah, I think Beatty and Marte are two guys that have to provide something for them this year. Marte's coming off injury, was not right all year with the double hernia surgery. One one, it's hit high in the air, softly to right center field. Late break for Carpenter, but he'll charge in now and make the easy grab, one out in the fourth. And, and, and Beatty it struggled mightily last year, got sent down to the minors, came back and still didn't hit when he got here. But they're giving him the opportunity. It's his to lose over there, and they still think there's, you know, you talk to people around this organization, they still think there's some upside in this young man. And like I said, let us get out of town, then go off. But, um, you know, they, they, for this, this team to do anything, those two guys have really got to step up offensively. Marte steps to the plate, lined out his first time up, sharply hit ball up the middle, tries to bunt his way on, bunts it foul straight back. In terms of hard contact, this is the only ball that's been hit hard. It's just that Matt Manning's command has been off so far. He's starting, it feels like, to dial it in a little bit better. He still, his pitch count was right around 60 after three. If he can get the Tigers five, I think they'll be thrilled. If we're thinking along with A.J. Hinch, and he doesn't want to use any relievers 
twice today swinging a long slicing foul into the seats down the right field line no balls and two strikes on Marte that would leave Fiedo multiple inning guy Holton who can work multiple innings and Will Vest who can also work multiple innings but is more of a, a one one and a third inning guy those will be the three guys to cover the last four innings ground ball up the middle grab by Matt Manning runs toward first underhand flip to Torkelson nice play used every bit of that 6-6 six, six frame to grab it two outs here in the fourth yeah you talked about him being a good athlete and feeling his position well delivers that ball puts himself in a good position to be the an extra infielder when he's done with his delivery and like you said needed all of that frame to get to it today's game brought to you in part by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan the official health care provider of the Detroit Tigers radio network he will always tell you that on both of the balls that hit off his foot last year he got the out <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> Taylor takes first pitch breaking ball for a called strike one so now he's dialing in the slower sweeping breaking ball with the curveball to get strikes slider low and away one ball one strike on Tyrone Taylor one was a line drive off his foot that he reached down picked up and threw out Alejandro Kirk and the other was the Giancarlo Stanton like 200 mile an hour line drive <laughs> off his foot that popped up in the air and he made the catch anybody else would be on the ground Matt Manning is making the catch fly ball to right is fairly deep but easy play for Carpenter back a few steps makes the catch Tyrone Taylor has power but he didn't get to the warning track and that is a nice quick much needed one two three inning for Matt Manning and the Tigers we head to the fifth inning second game of a doubleheader Tigers won game one it's one nothing Tigers after four in game two on the Detroit Tigers radio network where does one community end and the next begin across the railroad tracks on the other side of the river? Is it between the east side and the west side? At Comerica Bank, we believe it's all one community, and we're all part of it. That's why Comerica has invested over $20 million for affordable housing, financial education, and workforce development in lower income communities. Because when we raise expectations for everyone, we all rise. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. Is it too early to start planning for our kids' inheritance? At Comerica Bank, we don't think so. But we're not talking about 401ks or trust funds or estate plans. This is about the greatest gift we can possibly pass on, a healthy planet. That's why Comerica actively invests over a billion dollars in green businesses and environmentally beneficial projects every year. Because this inheritance is too important to waste. Comerica Bank, member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. After a car accident, people need to hire a lawyer more than any other time. And your decision has to be made fast. So call Figer Law first. Our team of trial lawyers will get you the money you deserve. Because nobody has won more auto cases than we have. Figer Law. All we do is win. Official law firm of the Detroit Tigers. All we do is win. Northville Lumber is Michigan's Trex decking leader in the official lumber yard of the Detroit Tigers radio network. NorthvilleLumber.com. Jake Rogers in the number nine spot leading off Jose Buto on the mound first pitch fastball above the strike zone ball one so both starting pitchers command way off early especially through the first two both have now settled down Buto especially working a quick third and fourth innings the 1 0 pitch to Jake Rogers low and outside still not a lot of strike ones but quicker at bats. The Big Tigers triple this season Powell Miller gives three hundred dollars to select charities the Miller law firm lawyers who support the community when the Tigers were last at bat we were telling you about our visit with Rajay Davis during the rain delay Tuesday as Bobby said it's it's you can't come away from a conversation with Rajay Davis without a big smile on your face he just seems like the perfect person swing and a miss to have the job that he has a liaison meaning that he goes out and talks to players on teams about some of the things the commissioner's office is trying to do in terms of rule changes and changes to the game and then kind of reports back strike on the inside corner. You need the right kind of person in that job. And um, it seems like he's the perfect guy. He is. He is the perfect guy. He's had a long career. Didn't get to the big leagues, especially quick, but played for a long time. 
retired at 38. 2-2, two -two, swing and a miss, and Jake Rogers strikes out for the second time today. And it played across a few different errors that saw some things happen. And, and then on top of it, you need the right guy. And again, if you talk to Rajay Davis for five minutes and you don't have a smile on your face, I need you to go have a look in the mirror and have a chat with yourself. There may, he's top shelf, top tier human walking the face of the earth. Such a good dude, humble, and, and just he is the perfect guy to do the job that he's being asked to do. Now, there are certain people that uh, you run into them and your day's better. Oh. No, no matter if the conversation lasts 30 seconds or five minutes. And we got a good 20 minutes with yeah, Rajay the other yes, night. It was great. Absolutely. Very popular Tiger pitch low and away to Meadows. And it's quickly 2 and 0. Oh. Looks like he could still, still steal a bag. He regaled us with the story of his one of his last home runs of his career was right here at City Field being called up from Lehigh Valley where Syracuse was playing the Syracuse Mets swinging a soft tap foul two and one on Meadows and it's a it's a long story but it's hilarious and he <laughs> ended up having to get an Uber that lasted a two and a half hour Uber ride because they didn't provide a car for him when they called him up came up here got in that bat in the eighth inning of that game hit a three run home run that delivered a win just unbelievable the two one swinging to the fly ball center field Fairly well hit, but over and in to right center to make the catch Harrison Bader. In the end, that ball kind of died in the right center field gap, two outs. And then we confirmed as he was walking away, we confirmed that he was the one. And I, I, I said I've always given him credit for the uh, the oven mitt that yes. base dealers wear. And it literally, I think, was an oven mitt <laughs> that he in, put on his hand to, because he said, I kept jamming my thumb. And then they sewed that thumb part into the other part of the hand to protect the thumb and now that oven mitt which he regrets that he never patented Ugh. is something that almost every single base runner puts on when he reaches first base and, and when they first started the thumb was out and that's what you have to remember pitch in the dirt one and one on Torkelson one nothing Tigers in the fifth it, it was literally just a piece of neoprene without a thumb and your thumb would stick out and the, and the you know the idea was clearly to keep you from jamming your fingers well he kept jamming his thumb so he went and got to your point he went and got an oven mitt and swinging a foul out of play one and two on Torkelson and told us the story of how his trainer took it home and his wife stitched the thumb closed <laughs> and and then you know in, in in only in baseball fashion you put you put put a little duct tape around it then it's fine <laughs> and then and then there you go and he in the oven mitt uh was born was baseball uh, the training aid or uh, uh protection aid was is born pitch in the dirt and now truly it's it's obviously evolved it's no longer an oven mitt but that's what it looks like hey, that's essentially what it is that's what they call it that's what so the guys I, go, call it I go into the sporting goods store and i see all different models and makes and i'm like wait a minute the 2-2 two -two, swing and a miss fastball up and in at 92 gets spencer torkelson and buto has settled down pretty dramatic change and turnaround for him the last three innings He's faced a minimum of nine batters from the start of the third inning through the fifth. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth inning, one nothing Tigers. This is the home of Detroit Tigers baseball. The 2024 NFL Draft is fast approaching, and Sirius XM NFL Radio is getting you ready with our series of draft previews. Caleb Williams, is there anything this guy can't do? Get expert insight and analysis from our staff of former players, coaches, and executives. This is a special talent, and he can beat you with his feet. He can beat you with his arm. Sirius XM NFL Radio's 2024 NFL Draft Preview, Quarterback Edition. Get it anytime on the all-new Sirius XM app. This is CJ Nikowski. Join me, Ryan Spielborgs, and Brad Lidge every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern as we give you the player's perspective of what's happening in baseball. He is possessed every time he goes out there right now. This is crazy. There's this energy that certain players bring. It's Loud Outs every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 89, and the all-new Sirius XM app. Hey, baseball fans, NBA Radio is your home for the best 24-7 hoops talk. LeBron, three for the tie. It's good! Hear nonstop talk from our experts every day and the best games every night as we get you ready for the playoffs and the quest to raise the Larry O'Brien trophy. After 47 years, the Denver Nuggets are finally NBA 
champions. Don't miss a moment on Sirius XM NBA Radio, Channel 86, in the car, and on the brand new Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win whichever fantasy sport you play. Right now on Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. And many other fine retailers across Michigan. Manning delivers a strike to Omar Narvaez to start the bottom of the fifth inning. This is Tiger Baseball 2024. Tight, low scoring, well played games every single day. We had a 7 6 game in Chicago, but that again, a one run game. Every other game has been tight and low scoring. Narvaez takes a pitch outside, one ball, one strike. Nine pitch, fourth inning for Manning was key. Pitch count 69. Coming into the fifth, Narvaez swings, fouls it back to the screen. Bottom part of the order, another opportunity here to work a quick inning. Narvaez, Bader, Wendell, three very pitchable hitters for Matt Manning, especially with his stuff. He started to dial in the sweeper, started to snap off a few good curveballs. Pitching a little bit backwards, and now the fastball is starting to play up. The one-two is swinging a pop-up softly into left field. Cannon will come in under it, makes the catch. That's his first 95 mile an hour fastball of the day, and this is kind of what we saw last year. But he's slowly dialing it up. Maybe sometimes I don't know, Bobby. Maybe sometimes he just needs to, especially on a cold day, maybe just get into that groove and get loose to throw 95. Yeah, and, and I don't think on a warm night that's the case, but I could see it being the case today. No, unfortunately for him, let's be honest, his lineup gets a little short a little quickly, but also, too, he's been able to throw his breaking balls for strikes, too, so that's been a plus for him today. Sweeper for a strike one to Harrison Bader, right-handed batter, two for 13 start to the season, popped out, nice play by Spencer Torkelson on a pop-up over by the first row by the screen down the first baseline, strike one pitch, check swing, did not go as he stays with that sweeping slider. That is his preferred pitch today. He's thrown it, I think, more than any other pitch. Straight up at short for Baez. The outfield place is ready to pull just slightly. Fastball top of the strike zone, swinging a foul straight back. And I think as he throws that, I mean, even on days when maybe he doesn't have the 96, 97 that we know he has, 92, 93 with that vertical on his fastball will play at the top of the strike zone. It absolutely will. Absolutely. The one two. Ground ball softly to the right side ranging far to his left. Cole Keith on the outfield grass fields turns flips two outs in the fifth inning. Nice play by Cole Keith. Cole Keith was pulled up the middle with Harrison Bader being the right or being a right handed hitter playing just to the right field side of second base. Bader hit that ball pretty hard. Colt had the range pretty far to his left to get it, but no problem. And those are the plays right there. People are wondering, can he make that play? That's a routine play. Make the routine plays yep. routinely, and he's going to be just fine. And then you can expand from there. But do that, there's going to be no problem with his defense. Two quick outs from Matt Manning. Now a slicing drive down the left field line off the bat of Joey Wendell. That's what you want him to do. Hit the ball in the air, and Cannon will make the easy catch in fair territory. Down the left field line, soft fly ball, and another quick inning for Matt Manning in the fifth. He's really settled in and been strong through five. We head to the sixth inning, one nothing Tigers after five on the Detroit Tigers Radio Network. Hurry up and try new Little Caesars Crazy Puffs. They're four fun-sized Crazy Puffs packed with layers of pepperoni, cheese, and sauce, and perfect on the go. Enjoy Crazy Puffs on a unicycle. What? In a hot air balloon! Or riding piggyback on your friend Keith. Faster, Keith, faster! Can I have a delicious Crazy Puff? Sorry, Keith, they're too tasty. Whee! <laughs> Try new Little Caesars Crazy Puffs on the go for only $3.99. Pizza, pizza. Available in participating locations. Prices may vary. Prices higher in Alaska, Hawaii, and third-party online sites, plus tax. I'm attorney Mark Bernstein. 1-800-CALL-SAM is always a free call. And your fast, confidential consultation is always free, too. And for over 50 years, our no-fee guarantee means you don't pay us a fee unless we win your case. If you're hurt in an accident, get the Bernstein Advantage. Call 1-800-CALL-SAM. What do you have to lose? It's free. 1-800-CALL-SAM. One bite of 100% Angus Beef Ballpark Frank, and you'll say... At the 10, 
Hello, summer. Ballpark Franks. They plump when you cook them. It's time to take a bite out of summer and fire up the grill, America, because, oh yeah, it's ballpark season. Michigan's corn farmers innovate every year to protect our environment while providing food, fuel, and fiber. Find out more at micorn.org. Kerry Carpenter leads off. Jose Buto and Matt Manning are dueling now. Both were, man, looking like it might be a short day for both the way they started with little command. Both have really settled in and pitched well the last three innings. One nothing Tigers to the sixth. Kerry Carpenter takes. Change up below the strike zone. One ball, one strike. I'd like to remind you, you can stream Tigers games all season long free on the Odyssey app. Download the Odyssey app today. Sixth inning brought to you by the Jack Demmer Automotive Group. Experience the Demmer difference. The 1-1 one -one to Carpenter. Fastball high and away. Mets bullpen getting busy. Again, seven of the, I believe there are nine relievers in the New York bullpen that were at the start of the series, so I'm assuming that is the case. Seven of the nine relievers used in game one. The 2-1, Carpenter swings, pops it up. Shallow left field. Taylor comes in, keeps coming in. Where were the infielders? He makes the catch about 30 feet beyond the infield dirt. They just decided that both, he's got it. <laughs> both, both Lindor and Bader were saying, you got it. It, it just, wow. I think the wind knocked that down quite a bit. I think so. I think <laughs> that so. That was pretty funny. That was literally, what, about 30 feet on the yeah, outfield that grass? Was it. And neither Lindor nor Beatty left the infield dirt. Riley Green swings and misses at a first pitch changeup. That, that was an odd one. <laughs> the series brought to you in part by Northville Lumber. The strike one. Shattered bat, ground ball to second base. Picked up by Wendell. The easy flip to Alonzo over at first. Little little bit of that bat left by home plate. The barrel went out toward second base, died on the infield grass. Two up and two down. I'm impressed by Butoh's turnaround. He's been very good. He settled in. We talked about the lack of command, really and truly the lack of control throughout last year. Very tough to hit. He's got good stuff, good, good live fastball, and a good changeup he uses quite a bit. But once he reins it in, you've got something. Now Canna swings and pops it up softly to center field. You talk about a quick inning. In comes Bader, makes the catch. The wing clearly pushing these balls to the outfield toward the infield. He makes the catch in very shallow center. Canna pops out. A 1-2-3 inning on seven pitches for Buto. Tigers clinging to a 1-0 lead. We go to the bottom of the sixth. This is the home of Detroit Tigers baseball. The greatest guitarist is Eddie Van Halen. What about Prince? You have to include Slash and Jimmy Page. B.B. King and Bonnie Raitt. The Edge changed everything. The debate continues with rebellious riffs and six-string solos on the SiriusXM Guitar Greats channel. All hail International Guitar Month. SiriusXM Guitar Greats on channel 107 and year-round on the SiriusXM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern. It's the Cookout 400 from Martinsville Speedway. Check and fly, baby. Yeah. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Oh, yeah. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. 24-7, 365, coverage of all things NASCAR. All things NASCAR happens exclusively on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, Channel 90. Detroit Tigers. And 
Nimmo takes first pitch fastball from Matt Manning. Misses the mark, ball one. Two nice quick innings from Manning. Two nine pitch innings, a fourth and fifth. A 1 0 pitch on the outer half of the plate. The reliable slider coming into this inning. 36 fastballs, 31 sliders. Most of them of the sweeping variety. The 1 1 away with the sweeper. So the splitter, curveball, just occasionally. Not many of either. Fastball command's been a little bit off, but credit to Matt Manning for bouncing back starting after the walk to Nimmo in the third. Pitch off the plate away. Tried to backdoor Nimmo with the slider. Nimmo at the plate. He's walked twice. Reached in game one of the doubleheader with two walks as well. The 3 1. Walked him again. My goodness. Tyler Holton is warming in the Tigers' bullpen. You would figure that trying to think along with A.J. Hinch, and believe me, he's always four, five, six steps ahead of us, but that he would be brought in for Beatty. He's not going to come in to face Alonzo. So you would think that he wants Matt Manning to get, at least get him through Alonzo. Francisco Lindor takes first pitch a little bit low ball one. Now, Dan, I think I think you're right on that. You know, and we'll see. Like you said, it's a, AJ's always got something up his sleeve. But uh, if you could get him, if you could get, get him through Alonzo and and possibly go get Holton for Beatty, and hopefully he can get down through window, then turn it over to the rest of the pen after that. Ground ball fouled on the third baseline off the bat of Lindor on the fastball. Strikeout update. Brought to you every game by Carbliss, the official ready to drink canned cocktail of the Detroit Tigers. Three strikeouts for Matt Manning, four walks, three strikeouts. A little sidearm flick over to first. Again, does a pretty good job paying attention to the running game. Nimmo looked like he had stolen a base in the first inning, but on the strikeout of Alonzo, catcher, batter's interference on the catcher was called so Nimmo had to go back to first fly ball softly into right field not much of a sound off the bat that time maybe got in on the trademark a little bit Lindor lifts it softly Carpenter makes the easy catch and right one on one out sixth inning one nothing Tigers if what we I mean again knowing AJ and what he's told us in past years never likes to use relievers in both games of a double header so that would leave Fiedo Holton Vest to cover what I'm pretty sure he's hoping will be three innings, maybe three and a third to close this one out today. Obviously having to plan for the possibility of <laughs> extra innings again. Alonzo takes a pitch that bounces and that would be Fiedo to work multiple innings. Holton can certainly do that. Nemo's always looking to go. Short, cautious lead at first. The 1 0. Slider to Alonzo. Misses in. 2 and 0. Manning struck out Alonzo in the first inning on a fastball. Struck him out in the third inning. The 2 0. Swing and a pop up. Behind home plate. Out of play. Man, that is his pitch today, isn't it? He's really gone to it, and it's been really good. He's been able to get back into counts when he needed to with landing it for a strike. That one, he got away with a little bit. That was a sweeper that didn't sweep too much, and it was in the middle of the plate. Alonzo was only able to foul it off. But he found those little fastball command there in the last couple innings. It's kind of gotten away from him again. He's gone back to that sweeper and found a way, found a way to be effective. 6-6 six, six right into his motion. 2-1 popped in the air. Waving his arms, Cole Keith will backpedal onto the outfield grass and make the catch. Always good to get Alonzo out just with that power thread every time he steps to home plate. A big second out, and that will indeed be the end of the day for Matt Manning. Coming up from Toledo to make an important start in the doubleheader, and he has shut out the Mets over five and two-thirds. Great job. Pat on the back from manager A.J. Hinch. Great job for Matt Manning. Man on, two outs, sixth inning. And while the Tigers make the change, Tyler Holton coming on to face the lefty Beatty. We'll pause for these words on the Detroit Tigers radio network.
For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families. A legacy of capability and technology that has made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Based on 1977 to 2023 calendar year total sales. Hey, baseball fans, Mike Valenti here. On your next trip to Vegas, you got to go to the D Las Vegas. You're going to feel right at home because the D, it's all about you. It's all about Detroit. It's not on the strip. It's in downtown Vegas. The odds are better, the party's bigger, and the D has got things you won't find here, like a world class sports book, the long bar. It's simply the best place to settle in and watch a game. Have a great dinner at Joe Carey's on the Amo Italian Steakhouse. And if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, leave the strip behind and hit the D Las Vegas, the home for Detroit sports in Vegas. At Corwell Health, we know time doesn't heal all wounds. Hard work, innovation, and we do. We're fighting cancer with proton therapy and music therapy. We're turning back the clock on Parkinson's with deep brain stimulation and outsmarting blood clots in seconds instead of days. Because this is your time to take control of your health. And it's time to show that together, we can. Corwell Health. Tyler Holton comes in, Nimmo's at first. He's there with two outs in the sixth inning. Tigers leading one nothing. <laughs> Tigers are asking a lot out of this pitching staff. Just keep putting up zeros. That's all we're asking of you. And they're doing an incredible job. Tyler Holton, first pitch on the outside edge for a called strike one. Yeah, Tyler Holton comes in with his bag of tricks. This six pitch mix, really four seam fastball, two seam fastball, change up and cutter and change up cutter and slider. Strike on the outside corner. Matt Manning walked four, struck out three, and oh, by the way, did not give up a hit. In five and two-thirds innings. That's a good outing. That's a tremendous outing for Matt Manning. Look at the hard contact. One hard hit ball. You have a choice when you get when you, when you don't go to trip when you don't make the team, you go to triple A. You've seen guys go down there and sulk and not do well. He knew he was going to be needed and he was ready when his time came. Tyler Holton delivers perfect fastball down and away to the lefty Brett Beatty and on three pitches rings him up to end the sixth inning. Mets still looking for their first hit. Tigers holding on to a one nothing lead. We head to the seventh on the Detroit Tigers radio network. Where does one community end and the next begin? Across the railroad tracks? On the other side of the river? Is it between the east side and the west side? At Comerica Bank, we believe it's all one community, and we're all part of it. That's why Comerica has invested over $20 million for affordable housing, financial education, and workforce development in lower-income communities. Because when we raise expectations for everyone, we all rise. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. Is it too early to start planning for our kids' inheritance? At Comerica Bank, we don't think so. But we're not talking about 401ks or trust funds or estate plans. This is about the greatest gift we can possibly pass on, a healthy planet. That's why Comerica actively invests over a billion dollars in green businesses and environmentally beneficial projects every year. Because this inheritance is too important to waste. Comerica Bank, member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. Feel the sun on your face and enjoy the ride with a brand new truck or SUV from your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Whether you're north, south, east, or west, your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers are in your neighborhood. From their impressive family of SUVs to the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever, your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers will put you in the driver's seat. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Visit ChevyDetroit.com. Hey, baseball fans, Mike Valenti here. If you're looking for a great trip to plan, go do something fun. How about Vegas? The D.com, the D Las Vegas. It's your home for Detroit sports in Vegas. Nothing Tigers, seventh inning, seventh inning brought to you by General RV. Min 
Michigan's premier RV dealer for sales, service, and parts, General RV. Reed Garrett takes over on the mound for the Mets after six strong innings. Both starters very good in this game. Strong innings from Jose Buto. Six innings, one run on three hits, three walks, six strikeouts. But the Tigers have the one nothing lead. Colt Keith has a walk and a single. Takes the first pitch outside ball one. We have not seen Garrett in the series. Limited time in the major leagues. Now 30 years old. Colt Keith takes a pitch low and inside, and he has not had any success to speak of at the major league level in 44 innings of work. Tigers had Reed Garrett for 15 innings of work in 2019. 2 0. Strike at the top of the strike zone with a fastball. It's a lot of hits. It's not much swing and miss. It's a lot of power. The Mets trying to, they think they might have figured something out though. I'm trying to get something more out of them. Ooh. Yanks a fastball down and in. Colt Keith jumps back, falls across home plate. Time in the major leagues in 44 innings. He's given up 59 hits with a walk rate of six per nine and a strikeout rate of six per nine. That's not going to get it done. The 3 1. Swinging a foul out of play. It's a pretty solid looking bullpen. It's kind of surprising that there is room for someone who has not had any success at all at the major league level in this bullpen. Yeah, it's kind of tough because you, you, you look at the Tiger bullpen and there's so much depth and they do it in different ways. And then uh, this Met bullpen, a couple of guys are struggling a little bit. Cold Key swings, fouls it straight back. He's going to see at least seven pitches in this trip to the plate. Tigers would like to add on. I mean, it's nice to say, well, our bullpen can protect any lead, but give them a couple runs to work with Every once now in a while. Absolutely. Hey, <laughs> you know, it's working right now, but hey, fellas, you know, get us a few. Let's do it. We're not afraid of that. Left side of the infield, just to the right. The outfield just about straight up on this lefty. The 3 2 pitch, swing and a miss. He got him with a breaking ball down and in. Cold Keith strikes out to start the seventh inning. Constructing the Future is brought to you every game by the D Las Vegas. Book your stay now at the D.com. Your home for Detroit sports in Las Vegas. We told you earlier about some of the pitchers that we are looking forward to kind of keeping an eye on. Well, some of the hitters and the Mud Hens off to a three and two start. It's been a quiet offense. We think that offense could be very good as soon as it maybe warms up a little bit. But Justice Bigby, Dylan Dingler, Jace Young, all guys are keeping an eye on. Justin Henry Malloy, Wenzel Perez. Ryan Cradler, these are all players who might we might see in a Tigers uniform at some point this year. Again, it's a pretty quiet start. And that Toledo offense drawing a lot of walks, but everybody draws a lot of walks, but not hitting much right now for average or power. Line drive into right center field off the bat of Zach McKintry. That's going to drop for a base hit. Over the field on a couple of skips is Marte. Pinch hitting for Ibanez. Zach McKinstry. Line drive single with one out here in the seventh. Tigers trying to add to a one nothing lead, trying to sweep this double header, trying to come home six and oh. Let's pause right now for station identification on the Detroit Tigers radio. It's opening week of Major League Baseball. Talk baseball all year long on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM 89, and the all new Sirius XM app. Javi Baez swings and fouls one off his foot. It kicks out in front of home plate. On the scoreboard, 1-800-CALL-SAM Studio Scoreboard brought to you by Meyer, the official grocery retailer of the Detroit Tigers Radio Network. The Road Warriors, the Cleveland Guardians, are batting in the top of the sixth inning. They got the bases loaded in Minnesota. They've got a 3-1 lead. They are being led by what else? Good pitching. Look out, Shane Bieber did not have good health last year. He's back and healthy this year. He's already made two good starts. Tanner Bybee getting the start today. He's made a strong start. Ground ball to third base, waist high bounce for Beatty. Down to second one. Wendell's relay to first, that's easy. Taylor made 5-4-3, inning ending double play. Second time today, Javi Baez has bounced into a double play. Seventh inning stretch time in City Field in New York. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by DTE. Manage our energy use and save. Go to dteenergy.com backslash save energy. One nothing Tigers. This is the home of Detroit Tigers baseball. 
The best amateur players in women's golf will compete in the Augusta National Women's Amateur. Rose Zhang is your Augusta National Women's Amateur Champion. Sirius XM is your exclusive home for this premier event in the world of golf. Coming into the event, I knew that this wasn't going to be an easy fight. Hear the Augusta National Women's Amateur this Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern on PGA Tour Radio Channel 92 and NBC Sports Audio Channel 85. And then on Monday, Masters Radio returns on Channel 92 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Are you regretting eating that gas station hot dog? Yeah, we know. We've been there too. This is a message for baseball fans like you. Did you know that you get a channel that's talking baseball 24-7 as part of your Sirius XM subscription? What? Our lineup includes shows hosted by former big leaguers and executives. Plus, you'll hear from 17 managers each week. MLB Network Radio is on Sirius XM Channel 89. Or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports. We're more than just a game. This is Bob Kendrick, president of the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum and host of the Sirius XM original podcast. Black Diamonds. Hear stories about the legends of the Negro Leagues and conversations with the all-time greats they've influenced, like five-time World Series champion Derek Jeter. I don't care what race you are. You need to know your past. This is U.S. history. It's not just baseball history. Hear over 70 episodes of the award-winning Black Diamonds podcast, available now on the SiriusXM app or wherever you get your podcasts. Tune to Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88 all year long, all year long to hear expert opinions and analysis from former players, coaches, and executives. Tyler Holton pitching to starting Marte delivers ball one. Holton came on to get the final out of the sixth inning. McKintry in at third base, swing and a miss. Pitch up and in, the cutter up and in. Five pitch mix. Fastball, cutter, change up. He's inventing stuff on the mound half the time. Ground ball to short. Javi <laughs> Baez will pick it up and flip over to first. True five pitch mix for a reliever is a rarity, but he. He works at all of them. No. And it's so impressive, Bobby, how he learned last year to throw them to both sides of the plate. And, and that's the thing for me. He, he's, he has a starter's arsenal. And nine times out of ten, when you see a starter go to the bullpen, you subtract pitches. Well, not only has he kept his arsenal, he's added a couple things and added different types of usage to him. This, that's what's so impressive to me about what he's done. Ground ball back to the pitcher, Tyler Holton, off the bat of Tyrone Taylor. He fields and flips over to first. Two up, two down, seventh inning, one nothing Tigers. Today's game brought to you in part by Comerica Bank. Only one bank has been proudly committed to Michigan since 1849. Comerica Bank. To learn more, visit Comerica.com slash committed. Mets are still looking for their first hit here in the seventh. Francisco Alvarez, their hottest hitter, who had two hits in game one. Eight for 19 start to the year. He had a two run double in game one. He'll pinch hit for Narvaez. AJ Hinch has to think about how many innings does he want each reliever to cover. Francisco Alvarez takes first pitch on the outside corner, that cutter. That's a pitch that he really learned to throw to righties last year. The cutter on the back door, not just in. The strike one, swinging a fly ball, right field, hit hard, deep. Carpenter got a late read. He's going to go back, make the catch. Onto the warning track in right. A late break, and he just outran it to the track. Fine catch by Kerry Carpenter. It looked like extra bases for Alvarez. Instead, it is out number three. We head to the eighth. One nothing. Tigers on top on the Detroit Tigers radio network. The 
Big B Coffee, we're not just about coffee. We're about creating moments. Our baristas aren't just coffee experts. They're your friends who know your name and your go-to order. It's like stepping into your favorite neighborhood hangout every time you walk through our doors. In the mood for something a little different than coffee? We've got you covered with our wide range of Big B Blast energy drinks, refreshing cream freezes, and delicious Bragel sandwiches. Find a location near you or order online via the Big B Coffee app. Big B Coffee. The official coffee of the Detroit Tigers. Where does one community end and the next begin? Across the railroad tracks? On the other side of the river? Is it between the east side and the west side? At Comerica Bank, we believe it's all one community. And we're all part of it. That's why Comerica has invested over $20 million for affordable housing, financial education, and workforce development in lower-income communities. Because when we raise expectations for everyone, we all rise. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. Is it too early to start planning for our kids' inheritance? At Comerica Bank, we don't think so. But we're not talking about 401ks or trust funds or estate plans. This is about the greatest gift we can possibly pass on, a healthy planet. That's why Comerica actively invests over a billion dollars in green businesses and environmentally beneficial projects every year. Because this inheritance is too important to waste. Comerica Bank, member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. It's baseball season, and you know what that means. It's Fago time. Nothing beats an ice-cold Fago. Fago, the one true pop. Fago is a proud sponsor of Detroit Tigers Radio. Eighth inning today brought to you by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Put it in D. See why Chevy drives the Motor City. Hardest working player brought you every game by Carhartt. Proud to support Detroit Tigers baseball. All the hard working people who make it possible. Jake Rogers facing Reed Garrett. First pitch and swinging a tap foul on the ground behind home plate. One for 12 start for Jake Rogers. Been a bit of a tough go for him at the plate with eight strikeouts in those 12 at bats. His one hit was a home run. Garrett works from the stretch. Righty works third base side. Sets holds it at the belt to strike one. Short slider for a strike on the outside corner. No balls and two strikes. One run, four hits for the Tigers. No runs, no hits. One error for the Mets. The 0 2 up and away. It's incredible the job this pitching staff is doing. It really is, and it's just a testament to how good they were a year ago, and they carried that on. And each one of those guys wants to pass the torch. They don't want to let the other guy down. Fastball away, and it, it really does start feeding on itself in a very positive way, doesn't it? Absolutely. You want your boys to succeed. You want to go out there and compete and do your thing and hold up your end of, of the bargain. Matt Manning joined this rotation, which has all been pitching well again outside of the one start by Ken Tomaita. He wanted to join in, and he did. 2-2, two, two, swing and a miss. Mm. Jake Rogers strikes out on the slider at the top of the strike zone for the third time today. Struck out in a fastball earlier. Third strikeout, though, for Jake Rogers. 0 for 3. That brings up Parker Meadows. So our hardest working player today, this goes to Matt Manning, coming up from Toledo to make a spot start in a doubleheader. Five and two-thirds, no runs, no hits, four walks, three strikeouts. He battled his command, but Bobby, he, he battled back got into I mean it looked like it might be a short start 60 pitches through three got five and two thirds because he really worked I mean he got back in the strike zone and worked two quick innings in the fourth and fifth strike one to Meadows is off the plate inside one and one yeah Matt did a really nice job he got back in the strike zone and he did it in an unconventional way he really used his off speed that sweeping breaking ball and also a couple curveball mixed in mixed in he doesn't throw them but he hit with them and then he threw a couple below the zone for strikeouts and then was able to get his fastball command a little bit after, off of that Reed Garrett paints the outside corner with the slider for a called strike two. One and two on Parker Meadows. 0 for two with the walk for Meadows. Tigers run scored in the second inning. Colt Keith a walk, a steal, went to third on an error scored on a Baez single. That's been it. The one two bounces up to home plate. Kind of like the opener in Chicago. Tigers scored a run in the third inning of that game and said, okay, you guys hold them. <laughs> and they did. 
Game one of this series couldn't score. Please hold them so we can maybe get to the tenth. And they did. Today, one run. Hold them, guys. And they have so far through seven. No hits for the Mets. The 2-2. Two -two. Strike three. Oh. That's off the plate inside. Can't blame Meadows for taking it. That was a ball's width off the plate inside. That has not been a strike today for Nick Lentz, who I think has had a solid, consistent strike zone. That pitch has not been a strike, not but only, it is in this set bat. Yeah, not only has it not been a strike, Dan, but it's the one where he, where Alvarez wanted that ball away. He has to reach all the way across the plate. Not only is it not a strike, but he had to reach across the plate. More often than not, you don't get that call, but. Almost never. Brings out Spencer Torkelson. First pitch, splitter, swing and a miss. You're uh, seeing some good stuff with some uh, of these, these Mets say. pitchers. It's just the, getting them in the zone is 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 half the battle with, with a few of these guys with the walk rates being what they are with Buto and, and now with with Garrett. That's one thing you always have to remember. What what tweaks did a pitcher make to get better? And Reed Garrett clearly has made some tweaks. Pop up by the mound. Lindor will take charge, run onto the mound, make the catch. That's not an easy play. Running up the mound, running down it as he made the catch. Torkelson pops out. Good play by Francisco Lindor and a one two three inning for Reed Garrett and the Mets. We go to the bottom of the eighth. This is incredible. One nothing Tigers. This is the home of Detroit Tigers baseball. The Rock returns to the ring for WrestleMania 40 and Sirius XM's Busted Open is there to preview it all. Dave LaGreca, Tommy Dreamer, and our Hall of Famers Bully Ray and Mark Henry are in Philadelphia breaking down all the angles. I'm acknowledging Roman Reigns. That is our tribal chief. I am acknowledging this historic day, as you should too, Dave. It's Busted Open, mornings at 9 Eastern on Sirius XM Fight Nation. Channel 156 on your radio or listen anytime on the all-new Sirius XM app. There is no competition in soccer quite like the UEFA Champions League. And it's on Sirius XM FC. Kylian Mbappe delivering when it matters most. The stakes are higher now in the knockout stage where one goal can transform a club's trajectory. Jude Bellingham's driving, driving scores! And one performance can turn a star into an immortal. Erling Haaland has five! It's the Champions League knockout stage and all the top matches are on Sirius XM FC 157 and the all-new Sirius XM app. The Busted Open Podcast is now available on YouTube. This is Dave LaGreca, host of Busted Open, the number one pro wrestling show on the planet. You can now watch and listen to the award-winning Busted Open Podcast every single day on YouTube. Our best interviews, behind-the-scenes access, and some of our best content from the past. All available right now when you go to YouTube.com slash at Busted Open Podcast. Subscribe right now. In season or out of season, the number one place for college sports is Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84. In Vegas. Tyler Holton on the mound, Harrison Bader at the plate, first pitch swinging, he pops it up, foul and out of play. Tyler Holton starts him off with the cutter. So it's Bader, Faedo's ready in the bullpen. Wendell, a lefty in the on-deck circle. So the choice for Carlos Mendoza is pitch up and in. Do I let Wendell face the lefty Holton? But then Holton stays in for the lefty Nimmo. You don't want that. You pinch hit for Wendell. The only righty he has available is Zach Short, but you know that he would immediately face Alex Faedo. Right. I would think that's going to be the course that Carlos Mendoza will take. Bader takes strike two. Otherwise, you're keeping Holton in to face Nimmo. The one two. Swinging a pop up softly into left center field coming in. Canna, he'll let that drop. He won't let it drop. It did drop. Just a little pop fly. The first hit of the game off the bat of Harrison Bader is a little pop fly single. The Mets fans are going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they are so excited. It was a change up, a little rear end out piece for Harrison Bader. Got just enough of it off the end of the bat to nestle it into left field in front of Mark Canna. First hit 
since Beatty singled in the fifth inning of game one. Remember, game one went 11 innings. Indeed, it is Zach Short. But A.J. Hinch is going to ride with Holton because Nimmo is on deck, I would think. I think so, too. I think that's right. And, and obviously, Tyler Holton has the ability with his stuff to get both right and left handed hitters out. Now, it's a big left right split last year, but just remember, he just buried lefties. Right. He really did a nice job against righties. Bunt attempt. Holton will get off the mound. Backhanded field and flip over to Spencer Torkelson. Zach Short sacrifices Bader to second base. That was his job. Nice play by Holton. Falling off the mound of the third base side. Short tried to punch it to second base. Holton made a nice play. Down to second base goes Harrison Bader. Yeah, Shorty tried to push that bunt. Try to beat him with it. Up the in in kind of in that alley between the pitcher and, and second base there, but Holton hopped off the mound, made a nice play. Harrison Bader has speed. He can run. He's a good base runner. First pitch to Brandon Nemo. It's a walk machine right now. Is low and outside ball one. One nothing Tigers. Potential tying run at second base. First time the Mets have had a runner at second in game two. Nemo takes. Slider strike on the outside edge. Again, Holton just buried lefties. Low batting average, no power at all last year. Nimmo hangs in there against lefties. He's a good hitter at the plate. Deep in that left-handed batter's box. Upright stance, and he's slightly flexed. The 1-1, he swings and lifts a high, shallow fly ball to left. Mark Canna comes over three steps, makes the catch in left field for a big second out, and that will be the end of the day for Tyler Holton. This copyrighted broadcast presented by authority the Detroit Tigers may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Detroit Tigers. Great job by Holton again. While well, the Tigers make their change Alex Fajardo coming on man at second two outs eighth inning one nothing Tigers. We'll pause for these words on the Detroit Tigers radio network. Hi, Matt Garko here from Bill Brown Ford in Livonia. We're excited to have the all-new 2024 Ford F-150 on the lot right now. Unleash power and performance now at Bill Brown Ford in Livonia. This legendary pickup combines rugged durability and cutting-edge technology, delivering a driving experience like no other. Elevate your journey with the 2024 F-150 where strength meets sophistication. Visit Bill Brown Ford in Livonia and experience the future of driving today. Visit us on Plymouth Road in Livonia or online at BillBrownFord.com. Hey, Detroit, Flagstar is bringing banking to the big leagues. Now we have even more accounts and services available from simple savings to private and commercial banking. Wherever you are on your financial journey, our talented bankers are here to help. And our technology is as helpful as the people. Stop by a branch or visit Flagstar.com. Together, we can do great things. Flagstar Bank, let's align the stars. Hurry up and try New Little Caesars Crazy Puffs. They're four fun-sized Crazy Puffs packed with layers of pepperoni, cheese, and sauce, and perfect on the go. Enjoy Crazy Puffs on a unicycle. Whoa! In a hot air balloon! Or riding piggyback on your friend Keith. Faster, Keith, faster! Can I have a delicious Crazy Puff? Sorry, Keith, they're too tasty. Whee! <laughs> try New Little Caesars Crazy Puffs on the go for only $3.99. Pizza, pizza. Available in participating locations. Prices may vary. Prices higher in Alaska, Hawaii, and third-party online sites, plus tax. Every pitching change brought to you by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Ford first. Alex Fiedo appeared in game one of this series was dynamite. He's been great since the beginning of spring training. In two innings of work the other night, he got 10. 10 swings and misses. Seven on the slider. Lindor at the plate. First pitch. Slider strike in her half of the plate. Strike one. Yeah, Fajardo's going to come out of that bullpen firing that slider. That's his pitch. Slider and a four-seamer. He'll throw the occasional changeup, but mostly sliders and fastballs. Lindor switch hitter batting lefty. Check swing. Slider down and in. Did he go? Yes, he did. Appeal to third. John Bacon goes up with the right hand. No balls, two strikes. Lindor 0 for 11 with two walks. He's also been hit by a pitch in the series. 
Aedo works third base side. Sets, holds a glove at the belt. Checks the runner, Bader. The pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. Change up from Fiedo wipes out Lindor. We're headed to the ninth. After eight innings of play, the Tigers are three outs away from sweeping the doubleheader and sweeping the series. The Tigers have a one nothing lead after eight on the Detroit Tigers radio network. Hurry up and try new Little Caesars Crazy Puffs. They're four fun-sized Crazy Puffs packed with layers of pepperoni, cheese, and sauce and perfect on the go. Enjoy Crazy Puffs on a unicycle. Whoa! In a hot air balloon! Or riding piggyback on your friend Keith. Faster, Keith, faster! Can I have a delicious Crazy Puff? Sorry, Keith, they're too tasty. Whee! <laughs> Try new Little Caesars Crazy Puffs on the go for only $3.99. Pizza, pizza. Available in participating locations. Prices may vary. Prices higher in Alaska, Hawaii, and third-party online sites, plus tax. When it comes to your career, it's time to get off the sidelines and into the game by checking out the opportunities at UWM, the number one mortgage lender in America. UWM offers paid training, a unique and diverse culture, and perks and benefits that are crowd favorites, like free tickets to concerts and sporting events. With plenty of entry-level positions available and no mortgage experience necessary, there could be a spot for you in our lineup. Join our team and be a fan of where you work. Start your search today at uwmjobs.com. When it's time to plan for an annual physical or when there's a health issue you didn't plan for, you want care that feels personal and care that's convenient. From primary care doctors who see you as a person, not just a patient, that's Trinity Health. We're local and we're also backed by a national health system. Schedule online at trinityhealthmi.org slash IHA primary care. Trinity Health, we see all of you. Northville Lumber is Michigan's Trex decking leader in the official lumber yard of the Detroit Tigers radio network. NorthvilleLumber.com. Barry Carpenter leading off first pitch outside. Every Tigers home run this year is a Little Caesars pizza home run. Order online for pickup or pizza portal deliver for delivery or pizza portal pickup. Carpenter waiting on a 1-0 from Reed Garrett, the one-time Tiger, whose stuff looks a little bit better. It's a mid-90s fastball. He's starting to throw the slitter more, the fastball less, the slider more, and uh, it's really a, a different-looking pitcher, even though he still hasn't had success at the major league level. You can see why, Bobby, they kept this guy at the major league level this year. Carpenter swings and it's a high fly ball left field fairly deep going back Taylor tracking it and he'll make the catch. You're just not going to get one out to left with a strong wind blowing in. That wasn't a bad swing from Kerry Carpenter. It's the first out of the ninth inning. Let's check some scores from the 1-800 call Sam Studio scoreboard brought to you by Meyer, the official grocery retailer of the Detroit Tigers radio network. Cleveland 4-1 over Minnesota. That game is in the bottom of the seventh inning. They're trying for a 6-2 and two start on their 10-game road trip to start the season. 4-1, bottom of the seventh in Minnesota. Marley Green batting, first pitch. Fastball misses low and outside at 95, ball one. Sack short stays in the game. He's at second base. Beatty, Lindor on the left side of the infield. Shift way to the right. The 1 0 to Riley Green outside. 1 nothing Tigers. Dan, to your point, you know, so many more guys across the big leagues are throwing or pitching off their breaking ball now. You're just seeing that more. Before, it was just so taboo. Establish the fastball. If you can't do that, you can't pitch. Well, not so much. Riley Green takes a fastball away. It's, it really is amazing. Even when the guy's got mid 90s fastball, but then you realize all that goes into it. Maybe it's just a hittable fastball because of it's, you know, the shape of the pitch, its movement profile. Learned a lot about dead zone fastballs this year from Tigers pitchers. Pitch off the plate inside. Riley Green will draw a walk on four pitches. He's drawn his second walk of the game. The Tigers would love to add on. In the ninth inning, Faito's going to face the heart of the order, Alonzo Beatty and Marte. Incredible pitching by the Tigers has fueled this 5 0 start. Tigers won game one of the doubleheader. Had to go to extra innings, a rally late to tie it, got to extra innings. So they faced the most dangerous 
pitcher on the planet maybe and Edwin Diaz twice in this <laughs> series but both times he pitched in a tie game right and didn't have a chance to close it out Mark Canna takes a pitch off the plate inside ball one the 1 0 pitch from Garrett swinging and a miss fastball by him Canna's 0 for 3 in this game and Tough. really and truly you can't fault Carlos Mendoza for using him in uh, Diaz in those situations. No, keep, keep it close that's when you, you use them. You, that's exactly right. You never know, but it just seems like wow, you know, once you get past him, big sigh of relief. It gets a, it gets a little <laughs> gets a little different down in that Met bullpen. Toss over to first to drive Riley Green back. This could not have worked out much better for manager Mendoza in terms of using his bullpen in game two. Buto looked like he was going to go maybe three or four, ended up going six. And now he's using Garrett for the last three after using seven relievers in game one. Cannon takes a strike. Slider for a strike to make it one and two. Opening day tomorrow in Detroit. One o'clock start. I can't wait to get home. Bobby's coming <laughs> home. He can't wait to come home. First one in Comerica for me. <laughs> The one two swinging a pop up softly first base side Alonzo tracking and he'll make the catch over by the camera well at the end of the Mets dugout on the first base side. That's a good play. That ball was not hit very high in the air. Alonzo makes the catch two outs a man on. Now to bring up Colt Keith. Yeah always interesting. Navigating the, the edge of the rail and the camera well and you see guys tumble in there all the time but. Polar Bear in his home, his own, his home patch, knew where he was and uh, made a nice play. Cole Keith had the big hit in game one. It was runners at the corners and extra innings in the 11th after neither team scored in the 10th. Cole Keith takes first pitch, fastball strike one. Runners at the corners and there was a ground ball to third. Tigers extra inning runner trying to score was Ibanez and he did the right thing. He ran inside. The baseline on the grass forced to throw to foul territory to the catcher Narvaez from Beatty and it was perfectly executed. They cut down Ibanez so that brought up Keith with runners at first and second tie game in the 11th inning and he crushed it to the base of the wall in left field. Can't tell you what a good swing that was on a day like this when the ball's not going anywhere. It's cold, cold dense air means the ball just doesn't fly and that was the hit in game one. Made it a 4-3 game, and Urshela bloop single scored two more. It was just, re just really odd how that ball just cut the wind. It shows you how hard he hit that ball. The 1-1. Bounces up to home plate. A walk, a single, a strikeout in this game. He walked in the second inning to lead off the second, stole second base, went to third on a throwing error by the catcher, and then scored on a Baez one-out single. That's where we are. One nothing, ninth inning. The 2 1. Swing a line drive, base hit. An absolute rocket over the head of Beatty, who was basically out at shortstop. Sharp single for Cole Keith. Runners at first and second. And oh, would the Tigers love to add on to their one nothing lead here in the ninth inning? Yeah, good swing here by Cole Keith. He got a fastball up and away at about 95 miles an hour and hit an absolute rocket. Over the shorts, over the third baseman's head, who was pulled over into the shortstop's hole. Beatty couldn't get it. All six foot three of them. Two outs here. Runners on first and second for the Tigers in the top of the ninth. Zach McKinstry entered the game as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning, lined a single into right field. Riley Green, the runner at second base. First pitch to Zach McKinstry. Slider on the back door for it called strike one. Beatty, even with the base at third and off the line, Lindor at short shades up the middle. We saw McKinstry in game one shoot a ground ball single right through that hole that exists right now on the left side. The strike one. Up and away from Reed Garrett. Misses with another slider. One ball, one strike. One nothing, Tigers in the ninth inning. Five games this season, three for the Tigers have gone to extra innings. 5-0 record, trying to make it 6-0, the 1-1. Splitter misses low and inside. Again, the pitch that he has developed since he was with the Tigers in 2019. He threw it a little bit, but now he's throwing it a lot. 
It's got good action on it. It's got some good downward action. This one is more down than fading. Garrett works third base side. Sets, holds a glove at the belt, the 1-1. One, one. Mm. Grabs the outside corner with the slider. Two balls, two strikes. Outfield plays McKinstry to pull just slightly. Left fielder Taylor is straight up and in just a little bit on the lefty. The 2-2. Soft ground ball. Dribbles over by the Mets dugout. Foul on the first base side. Dan, I think our game time temperature is... <laughs> less than it was. Is Mike <laughs> first pitch. Significantly less than it was. <laughs> Sun is going down. It's all shadows. It's been cloudy most of game two anyway, but it's it's got a bite in the air right now. McKinstry wedding, the 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball foul behind Anthony Iaposi, the Tigers' new first base coach this year, with Joey Cora at third. Welcome additions to this staff. Anthony Iaposi was the manager at AAA Toledo last year, so he's a familiar face for a lot of the young players on this team who've come up this year, like Colt Keith. Just an, He's an all-energy guy down there yeah, at he first. Is. Yeah, he is. Joey Corr has been doing tremendous work with Gary Jones with the infielders. It's been a clean, good brand of baseball so far. Reed Garrett held it, held it, held it for an extra beat and finally stepped off. Riley Green at second, Colt Keith at first. Two outs, ninth inning, Tigers leading 1 0. McKinstry digs back in, taps the outside part of home plate, middle of the plate, upright, relaxed stance, waiting. The 2 2. Whoa, threw it right over the catcher, Alvarez, to the backstop. Alvarez just turned around and waited at home plate for the carom. That is a wild pitch. Runners at second and third, and there is concern for the Mets that something might be wrong with Reed Garrett. Trainers rushing out, and boy, you just hope that that doesn't mean something has gone terribly wrong. We have seen that before. Yep. Guy throws a pitch that's that wild and something went terribly wrong in the arm. Let's just hope it was something that slipped out of his hand. But the fact that the trainer immediately rushed out, they're looking at his hand, so that's good. I mean, sometimes you'll just see that the elbow blue. And it, it doesn't appear that that is the case here. And Reed Garrett uh, is assuring them he's okay. I think they would like to see him throw a pitch, but no. So maybe he just convinced them it slipped out of his hand. No, you're right, though. I mean, a lot of times when you see something, see a, a pitch just go that far high and wide, something let go yep. in the arm or the hand before that. But hopefully for him, hopefully that's not the case here. Now two in scoring position for Zach McKinstry. Taking his time before he digs back in. They have not restarted the pitch clock. Now they have. McKinstry wedding on a 3 2, two in scoring position. The pitch, swing and a miss. He got him with the splitter. McKinstry strikes out. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. 1 0 Tigers. This is the home of Detroit Tigers baseball. They are among the greatest to ever play their sports. Caitlin Clark is the all time scoring leader. They are legends and icons. Larry Bird hit the chop with two seconds left. I don't know how he did it. And you can hear them right now on the all new Sirius XM app. We are here with Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark. I'm so focused on winning. It's never anything I ever take for granted. Here comes Larry Bird, the Hall of Famer, and he just won Legend of the Year. The legend of the Year, isn't that something? For access to the game's Greats. We lie on the leader in sports audio. Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. Let's go, 
We're back on the track Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern. It's the Cookout 400 from Martinsville Speedway. Check or fly, baby. Yeah. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Yeah. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. Hi, this is Ray Hudson, and for all the biggest matches from Club Soccer's Holy Grail, the UEFA Champions League, tune in to Sirius XM FC 157. Lurs across Michigan. Ninth inning today brought to you by Comerica. Only one bank has been committed to Michigan since 1849. Comerica Bank. Alonzo, Beatty, Marte. Alex Faedo on the mound to try to close this one out. The dangerous Pete Alonzo on the, at the plate. The first pitch slider is strike one. His ability, Bobby, to throw that to steal strike one and to wipe out a hitter in a strike two count, it just impressive. It's really impressive, especially for a young guy. The strike one, swinging a fly ball, left center field. This one's deep, this one's trouble, and this ball is gone, a home run. Change up, down. Pete Alonzo has tied the game at one in the bottom of the ninth. Fajardo still strike one with that slider. This change up is down. This is two balls down underneath the zone. This is just a strong man who got the barrel to the ball. Said it before, sometimes you just got to tip your cap. This was a ball. Change up with some pretty good movement. It was a good pitch with good movement, and he, Pete Alonso just got the barrel to it and hit it out to a big part of the park. Now swing and a miss by Beatty on a slider down and in. Mm. That that's a bit of a stunner. One-one tie, bottom of the ninth. Work to do now for Fajardo to get this game to extra innings. Beatty takes a pitch down. One ball, one strike. Marte and Taylor now will be the batters in this inning. 1-1 one, one game in the bottom of the ninth inning. Just the second hit of the day for the Mets. Beatty takes outside. 2-1. and one. Really important for Fayette to get back in this count here, get it to 2-2 two, two as quick as possible. Beatty 0 for 3 today. Takes a slider low and inside. Strike 2. Visible reaction for Beatty. Be careful. I don't blame him. That ball's. That's incredible. That, that ball is in. Jake Rogers got the call. He did. Good, good job presenting that slider to the home plate umpire, Nick Lentz. The 2 2 way outside. Has to find a way to get in the strike zone on this 3 2. Just has to. Beatty's got a little below average strike. Or walk rate, a lot of swing and miss in this bat. The 3 2, low and outside. A little fist pump by Beatty. Pete Alonzo woke up that Met dugout. Got a little rally going. See if Alex Abayo can find a way to get out of this thing. He's got three righties coming up. Again, righties had the edge against him last year. All about being able to pitch inside to righties. Marte's a good hitter. He bunts it toward first base. Torkelson will charge, field, tag. Marte out on that first baseline. Beatty gets down to second base. Good job by Marte trying to advance that runner. Torque comes in, tags him out. But now Beatty's at second base with Tyrone Taylor striding to the plate. Taylor is 0 for 2, 1 for 7 in the series. First pitch from Fajardo. Slider for a strike on the outer part of the plate. Mostly slider changeup so far for Alex Fajardo. The strike one. Slider low and outside. Jake Rogers likes it. Points the glove out. 
Yeah, a little interesting. He hasn't used his fastball at all. At Cle all. Clearly, they have a game plan. They know what they're doing. But it's, it'd be interesting to see why he's gone completely away from the fastball in this situation. Very aggressive hitter at the plate. The 1-1. One -one. Hmm. Change up low. Really surprising. We haven't seen it at all. None. Even just for show. If, even if you want to just... I know he's trying to learn how to throw that ball into righties, but I feel like for that slider to play up, you got to go in there just to show that you go in there. 2-1, swing and a miss. The old reliable, big sweeping slider. Even when it's not in a 2-1, or a hitter's count, or not a two-strike count, which is his wipeout pitch, you right. can get the swing and miss in a 2-1. That's right. Paedo sets, checks the runner at second. The 2-2, way outside with his first fastball, not close. This is Fiedo's game. He's a strike thrower. He's just been a little bit off with his command. Home run and a walk to start the inning. Sacrifice has Beatty at second base. The 3-2 swinging a line drive. Base hit down the left field line, and that will win it for the Mets. Beatty around third scores. The Mets, no hit through seven. Scored two in the bottom of the ninth inning. And walk it off against the Tigers. Tigers five game win streak to start the season comes to an end. Our final score in New York, the New York Mets two and the Detroit Tigers one. Where does one community end and the next begin? Across the railroad tracks? On the other side of the river? Is it between the east side and the west side? At Comerica Bank, we believe it's all one community. And we're all part of it. That's why Comerica has invested over $20 million for affordable housing, financial education, and workforce development in lower-income communities. Because when we raise expectations for everyone, we all rise. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. Is it too early to start planning for our kids' inheritance? At Comerica Bank, we don't think so. But we're not talking about 401ks or trust funds or estate plans. This is about the greatest gift we can possibly pass on, a healthy planet. That's why Comerica actively invests over a billion dollars in green businesses and environmentally beneficial projects every year. Because this inheritance is too important to waste. Comerica Bank, member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. I'm attorney Mark Bernstein. When people contact us, they always ask, is this call and consultation really free? The answer has always been yes, it's free for over 50 years. It's always been free. A free call, a free consultation, and we don't get paid unless we win your case. That's our no-fee guarantee. Get a free consultation at 1-800-CALL-SAM or callsam.com. It's always free. 1-800-CALL-SAM. Hurry up and try new Little Caesars Crazy Puffs. They're four fun-sized Crazy Puffs packed with layers of pepperoni, cheese, and sauce, and perfect on the go. Enjoy Crazy Puffs on a unicycle. Whoa! In a hot air balloon! Or riding piggyback on your friend Keith. Faster, Keith, faster! Can I have a delicious Crazy Puff? Sorry, Keith, they're too tasty. Whee! <laughs> try new Little Caesars Crazy Puffs on the go for only $3.99. Pizza, pizza. Available in participating locations. Prices may vary. Prices higher in Alaska, Hawaii, and third-party online sites, plus tax. No matter the challenge, the response is always the same. We can. Tigers three outs away from a perfect 6-0 and o road trip to start the year. The Mets rally with two in the bottom of the ninth inning. You just wondered how long could the pitching staff possibly this be this perfect, Bobby? I mean, it would have been the third time they'd gone through nine innings scoreless. And the New York Mets rallied and answered that question. With two runs in the bottom of the ninth inning to walk it off, Alex Fiedo, a changeup to Alonso for the home run. And then uh, we were just kind of surprised. We know the slide was his best pitch, but a little bit surprised that he didn't really use the fastball at all. Well, not even to show it in, on either side of the plate. A little bit surprised, but again, these guys have a game plan. They know what they're doing. Yep. They've gone through it with the Tiger pitching department, and, and, and certainly uh, that was a game plan. And if you want to get beat with your game plan and get beat with your best stuff, that's what happened today, and sometimes that just happens. That's sometimes it just happens, and again, this pitching staff has been oh so good. Yeah, we can we can question it, but like you said, I, I, I think they've done a little more game planning than we have. <laughs> right, <laughs> without a doubt, with more information. <laughs> with more information. Tigers lose by the final score, two to one. That doesn't detract at all from our stat of the game.
Bobby, and that's a five and one road trip to start the year. You hope for a winning road trip when you start the season with six games on the road. The stat of the game is brought to you by McLaren Health, the official health care system of the Detroit Tigers. A 5-1 and one road trip is about as good as it gets. Again, three outs away from a per perfection. But you're going home 5-1, and one, and that's a pretty good feeling. And the only reason you'd be a little bit disappointed is because you were right here at the end of yeah. in, in game six, right? Like if this happened during the third game of the season, you lose a game and then you rattle off, you win the rest of them to go home 5-1, and one, nobody's... It's, it's not a big deal. It's the only reason we're doing it right. But to your point, Dan, this is a tremendous way to start your season. I don't care how you want to look at it, slice it any way you want to. This is excellent when you're going back to a home opening day. Big hit of the game brought to you by Little Caesars Pizza. Order online for delivery or pizza portal pickup. It's got to be the Pete Alonzo home run in the bottom of the ninth inning that tied the game at one. As we said, it wasn't a bad pitch. It's the improved changeup that Alex Faedo has, and it uh, it dove below the strike zone and sometimes do just give credit 